Yeah. We're live. Okay, come on. Let's see the jazz hands. Jazz Let's get hands. the jazz hands up there. Jazz come on, hands. Joe. You gotta do jazz yeah. hands, man. You do jazz there you hands. go. There you go. No, that wasn't that. Okay. Is that your jazz hands, Joe? Okay. I think. Okay, there you go. There you, go. <laughs> you've got. You must know how to do jazz hands. Okay. You know, you've got daughters. I do. I do. Yeah. I. I. I think I've got all of that. Uh, lined up and if, if if you want to do some disney show tunes later i'm all about it <laughs> yeah i see you in disney a lot <laughs> it, yeah it, it's the girls love it i why not it's it's simple and easy to do all i have to do is walk so and i yeah. don't mind walking in your family is it like are you the only dude and then in the, and then it's just chicks? it's 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 me and uh me and uh master chief our german shepherd we're we're, we're the only two dudes Those that's it only dudes oh you it's guys it. surrounded so yes oh. Yeah, I feel for you. I feel for you. You're you're a stronger man than me. So there you go. Yeah, it's it's probably awesome right now, man. It's probably gonna get worse for you as your daughters get older. Yeah, it's 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 still awesome right now. They're eleven yeah. and thirteen, and yeah. uh, you know it is just it it it's still a cool good age. Dad's still cool right now, so I'm, yeah, I'm glad about that. We're gonna try and hopefully hopefully that lasts for as long as possible. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, as soon as they hit teenage years, that's gone. <laughs> you're not, no matter what you do, you're not cool anymore. That's boys and girls. So trust me, I know about that one. All right, so I hope everyone has their big girl panties on. This is episode uh, 106 of the Who Moved My Freedom podcast, live from the Big Daddy Gun Studios. And tonight we're talking about the uh, concealed carry reciprocity bill that just passed through the house. Um, but it's got some uh, possibly poison pills in it. It's got the Nix or Fix Nix bill also included in there or wrapped in it somehow. <laughs> you know, I guess it's like when you're trying to give your dog some kind of pill that he doesn't want to take and you put it in something. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it's one of those kinds of deals. So we're going to talk about that, a whole bunch of other stuff that's going on in the gun world and the other worlds and news and all those kind of things. First, what I want to do, though, is introduce you guys to my guest. First of all, my first guest right here. This is Joe from 13C. Is it just 13C or 13C Gun Reviews now? Uh, both, right? You know what? 13C, 13C Gun Reviews, 13C Media, whatever you like. As long as 13C is in there, we're good. Okay. And what does the 13C stand for? Uh, 13 Colonies. There you go. Okay. That that's needs good. no explanation. Yeah. That's pretty simple right there. Yeah. Uh, OG, original gangsters. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so there you go. We also have my friend Kevin Dixie. He's oh, back in cool. back in town, I guess. I am back. Yep. You know what's going on, Kevin? Oh, um, nothing much, man. It was, um, it was a good weekend out in um, Colorado, Colorado Springs, Colorado, and uh, Breckenridge, Colorado. Had a, a great time out there at the folks with uh, at Springs Armory. Uh, hung out in the gun store, got to meet the community, chatted up with them. So that was fun doing the meet and greet there. Uh, Treat it very nice. I, I, I like that. I really like it. I think it's my second home now. Oh, you're liking Colorado, huh? Hey, man, I'm liking Colorado Springs. Oh. Colorado is a beautiful oh. state. It was my first time ever in that state, and okay. it, it was gorgeous. And I'm pretty sure I was lucky for it being December and I could drive. So, Oh, uh, sweet. Yeah, it was nice. Uh, but other than that, no, man, having a good time. Joe, good to be on with you. Can't wait to... Hey, nice to meet you, man. Have you guys met before? No. Okay, so I guess, uh, Joe, this is Kevin. Kevin, this is Joe. Joe, just so you know... We do memes of Kevin every chance we get, because Kevin is what is known as a donk aficionado. Oh, whatever, man. Um, <laughs> I don't know if do you know what a donk is. Um. Uh oh. Not, no, I'm gonna I, say no. <laughs> yeah, I pro probably safer to say no. <laughs> a donk. Kevin, why don't you explain this? Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm gonna try to do it this time safe. So you know what you ever um you know what like you ever see the big mud trucks like guys that do mud in their big trucks with the big wheels. Sure. Uh huh. So the same concept, but put custom rims on it and make it like a Chevy or a Ford or something like that. So it's basically a sedan that sits 30 to 40 inches in the, the sky with huge custom wheels on it. Okay. Yeah. So for example, here is a, and I'm serious when I say there's a meme <laughs> war going on because apparently it's not just Kevin in the meme war. There's me in a donk right there. Okay. Uh, this is not really me in a donk because actually I wouldn't mind. This one looks pretty sexy. I like this one. So that's me in a donk. Just so you know, you know, I'm trying to find one of Kevin here. I don't know if I've deleted those from my phone yet. They're pretty. They're pretty. They're pretty brutal. Yeah. 
Do you have one on your phone? I don't know where the word. I, I don't keep. I don't keep that kind of crap. <laughs> Enough of it floating around. I don't know. I don't know where they are on my phone. So, yeah, I don't know where the ones. And, they, and Joe, just for you know, they revised, which I guess I should have saved that one. They revised the dunk. I'm an HK guy, so they revised the dunk and made it an MP5 with big whims on it and put me on top of it. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We. Yeah. You know. Somehow it wasn't. It wasn't my fault. I. Uh, you know. I was trying to stop everyone from doing the the memes because you know that's just terrible. I think that's just terrible. I can't find I can't find any of those now, which is weird. They are on my phone, but you know, I'll show you. If I find it, I'll show you. So we'll come back to it. All right, let's go shout out everyone that's hanging out with us in the chat. Uh, I want to remind everyone, click the thumbs ups right now. We really need it and appreciate it. Okay, we've got lots of people watching us right now. Click thumbs up. If you hate us, you can also click the thumbs down. It's fine. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to take it personally. Thumbs ups, thumbs downs. We prefer the thumbs ups, though. Also, share this video with family and friends. Um, and when you share it on social media, make sure you do hashtag. What are our hashtags right now? Jazz big girl. Hands. Oh, hashtag jazz hands. Hashtag big girl panties. Yeah. Hashtag 13C gun reviews. <laughs> you know, hashtag Kevin Dixie is the donk king. You know, just whatever hashtags you come up with is hashtag, all good. Hashtag uh, NOC. Yeah, hashtag Burl. Kevin, <laughs> I don't know if you know this, but Burl is now a thing. Yeah, uh, yeah, Burl is a thing. So apparently I have to get on the Burl uh, patches, and I'm going to, for all the guys, I'm going to rock a Burl shirt and shot. So yeah, we'll, 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 we might even get uh, Mr. Forge for Freedom involved in that. Yeah, absolutely, because I hear other gun guys are saying Burl. They are. Yeah. Yeah, I got made fun of a couple of times. Like, oh, I heard you uh you can't say burrow. I'm like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah, <laughs> you did. I'm like, whatever, man. So Joe, just for you know, I um I am from the Midwest and we don't say barrel when it comes to gun. <laughs> barrel. It's not barrel, it's a burrow. That's what it is. It's a burrow. Okay. You, you said you're in your Midwest. Where at? St. Louis. St. Louis. Okay. All right. I'm in northwest Indiana. Oh, ah, okay. You're not far. Yeah, no, not far at all. Just how far are you outside of uh, Northwest? So how far are you outside of Chicago? Um, depending on traffic, an hour, hour, 15 minutes. Oh, okay, man. Okay. Not bad, not yeah, bad. that's why I'm trying to tell him. It's, oh, Lola just got that, by the way. She's on a delay. So she just got the barrel thing. That's from Jay-Z. You know, yeah. Oh, what no. is it? Something there's some kind of Jay Z line about when the barrel's in your mouth. Yeah, that's then they put it in a, a TIP song. Look at Hank yeah. trying to keep up with your hip hop. Okay, okay. Yeah. I know something about hip hop, man. I grew up, I was there at the origination of hip hop. Okay. All right, I hear so, you. Yeah, there like you go. Indiana in there. Yeah, you guys are not far apart, so you guys should be. I should see a video going down. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna link up. I did watch a couple of um a few of your uh, your things today. You're mm -hmm. the opposite of me in some ways because you're very, very detail orientated, which, you know, we need that. Uh, I am not. <laughs> I am, <laughs> I'm very, it does this, it does this well, use it, buy it. But uh, no, I can appreciate when, when a guy takes time and puts, um, puts a, a lot of effort into making sure that the consumer or potential consumer or, you know, other guy that's looking to get insight is, has a great source to go to and really get the details he's looking for. So, you know, bravo. I did watch it. Actually, I think I probably watched like eight or nine of your videos today. Oh well, thank you. Appreciate it. I, I appreciate that feedback. I try and I, I try and include enough information, uh, and then you know I'll try and link to some more details and stuff somewhere else, just for brevity's sake. Some of the videos, some people said, eh, you know, a little bit too long on a couple of them, but I'm trying. I'm trying to find that good balance of enough data, but not too much to overwhelm. Yeah, it's it should be as long as it takes, man. You know, everyone should do their thing. I think folks out there want more detailed information. Sometimes you go, you discover this thing because you watch a quick, fun video, and then you're like, you know what, I really like this, and then you start digging into more detailed videos. So there's uh, nothing wrong with that, in my opinion. And I encourage everyone to subscribe to 13C Gun Reviews. Go out there and do it, you know. This dude right here, you will find him on that channel. Also, don't forget about NOC Firearms on YouTube as well. Yes, thank you. This gentleman here, uh, he's now lately getting into comedy, but you know. Hey, it was one time. I, I, I gave it a yeah. shot. It, yeah. I think it worked out. 
Yeah, it was, it was funny. It was funny. So let me shout out everyone that's hanging out with us in the chat. Like I said, please give us the thumbs ups. We appreciate it. So it looks like Armament and Axis. Chris B, he was number one in the chat today. Chris Young, what's going on? Kentucky Firearms Network, um, The Archangel. Let's see who else we have in here. Uh, Robert Harris, Imposter, Joe Carpenter, R. Cromwell as well. And Real Cujo is also in here. What's going on? He's he's just stopping by for a little while to hang out with us. He's not feeling so well. We hope you get better. Real Cujo is a big supporter of the channel. Thank you very much. Tango Hunter, heads up 502. Uh, let's see who else here. Um, when you get uh, done with it, I want Chris, to get Yeah, okay. Chris Bolas, as well as the Tyvin Show. The Tyvin Show is in here. Vanessa Kitty. What's going on, Vanessa? Um, I'm trying to scroll through and see who else we got in here. Matt Soares, Screaming Skull Saloons. And let's see. Brag Mo, DC2 Mega Boost. And. Um, I'm going through. I thought I saw Walter. I think he came in for a second. Uh, Vlavishar 2, Greg 98K. Let's see who else. Who else is new in here? You guys were having a nice conversation before we got started here. here. LB Louis Cypher, Richard Monder, Foxtrot Echo, Richard Hughes. What's up to you guys? Um, I think I said Michael Bender, but you know, I'll say it again. Vanilla Go Gorilla. Vanilla Gorilla. Um, he's in here. Yes, Safety Harbor Firearms. He's in here. He says, watching from the sidelines, Little Lioness 01, 001, Viper 150311. Okay, there we go. Um, says, what time we kicking this? My jazz hands and big girl panties been waiting for a minute. <laughs> okay, I apologize to anyone who's sitting there in their big girl panties with their jazz hands going. Um, you know, you can always combine those two things and that will help you out. Judgment free zone. Yeah, exactly. We, we won't judge you if you do that. <laughs> uh, Rick Day, what's going on? Blazing 1212. Um, GA Driller. Let's see who else in here. David A. Uh, Razor JB. Eric W. There you go. Um, uh, DeMont. Uh, 60515SO. Okay. The range one is also in here. I carry my revolver in single action. What's up to everyone? Um, see, I carry my revolver in single action. I just got to you. I had to go down the whole list. So there you go. All right. So thanks for everyone for hanging out with us. Don't forget to click thumbs up. Don't forget to share it. And we appreciate everyone that did. Um, it looks like we've got a bunch of folks in here right now. Uh, Lola, what are you trying to tell me? Whatever you're trying to tell me did not actually come across my screen. Uh, let's see what Lola's trying to do. Uh, um, Royal V gave us two bucks and said, hashtag, hashtag pimping ain't easy. So there you go. Thank <laughs> you for that. True. <laughs> yeah. Um, and we've got a bunch of uh, folks coming in now. So what's up to everyone coming in? Rock Humper, Eli Jimenez. Uh, Recoil Junkie, TKO593, Nolan, Alyssis. There you go. All right. So shout out to everyone. If I missed you, um, say something to ha at Hank Strange or do a hashtag and I will shout out your hashtag if it's not too terrible. Hey, Hank. So what's going on? Before you go, before, while we're on announcements of people, I want to give a big shout out to uh, Mike Bryant. Who's always in the chats. Absolutely. So is in, um, he's in Colorado Springs and he's kind of the one that... Um, uh, kind of was the glue between me and the the FFL and, mm -hmm. you know, made an introduction. It was great. So big shout out to Mike. I spent a lot of time with him and his wife. Uh, great people, you know, so it's good to take stuff off of social media and put people face to face and, um, you know, get to meet them, get to laugh with them, talk with them. So big shout out to uh, to Mike Bryant. And he's also the same guy that uh, won the the Glock 19 Cerakote job because they couldn't have the 30 round magazines in the state of Colorado. Oh, OK. Um, so, so we the old Glock 19 got Cerakoted. No, he sent this. We got the slide and he gave me an idea. He said, hey, man, I just want this thing done. I'm like, all right. And we're not doing that thing. So just so everybody knows, we'll show his slide when I'm getting damn ready to. But <laughs> I have it. I have creative freedom over it. And we're about to do some interesting things to it. OK, that's cool. Mike, big shout out to Mike Bryan, man. Good, good guy. Yeah, he is. Absolutely. 
good guy. Congratulations to him. Hunts for Food 67 said at Hank Strange, I'm here. What's going on? Um, so and then we've got people talking about the, the bill, which we will get into. Opt out of gun control says hashtag opt out of gun control. <laughs> <laughs> nice little shout out for him. Little Lioness 001 says hashtag ban HR 4477. Um, and the, and we have a nice little discussion going on about that. So I think uh, let's let's take that first off the docket. What do you guys think, Joe? You're the guest. What's your opinion of this, my friend? Well, um, for a, there are a lot of like concealed carry bills, reciprocity that I had not supported in the past because they were horrible. Um, there was a lot of training requirements, other things is they just weren't set up right. Finally, in HR 38, we had a good, clean bill. I could definitely get. I was definitely 100 percent behind. Um, HR 38 by itself is a fantastic reciprocity bill. I couldn't be more happy about it. However, we've got this attachment coming where they're putting the quote unquote. Well, it's not coming. I mean, I think it passed the house today. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so, so. And they that, mixed them. They mixed them. Yeah, together. yeah, they mixed them. So now we have this uh, fix Nix bill, which is absolutely horrible. Um, you're, ta you're talking about where, you know, let's say, you know, Illinois, for example. Okay. I live right outside of Illinois. And a really quick side story a couple of years ago, I had uh, an I pass and I drive in and out of Illinois quite a bit. And the I pass is like the, the Illinois version of the tollway pass you drive through and you know it records your tolls automatically. Mm -hmm. So I had one of these and my license plate got tagged uh, five times from the span of I think 2004 to 2006. And I had an I pass the entire time. I also had an I pass all the way through up until 2012, 2013. It's about seven years past roughly. Well, the fines and fees that accumulated were over a thousand dollars at that point. Wow! And out of and, and out of the blue, I get I I get uh, I get I get this huge thing, not just from them, but from the state of Illinois. And it was legitimate; it wasn't a scam. Well, I mean, it was a scam, but it was a legitimate government sanctioned scam. Yeah. Right. So, <laughs> okay. So, uh -huh. uh, long story short, um, I, I actually wound up for a short period of time having uh, my license almost suspended. It was it was a huge store ordeal. And of course, when I went before uh, this little magistrate, I you know I brought you know proof that I've had an I pass with them, the same plates registered with them, all sorts of things registered with them. That its entire time, I said, how can they claim now seven years later, you know, thousand plus dollars worth of fines associated from what was at the time uh, five dollars in missed tolls? Mm -hmm. It was thousands of dollars. But it was over twelve hundred bucks. So. Long story short on that, I actually wound up paying them the five bucks and a $25 processing fee after what was, I think, six hours in person and about 40 hours on the phone to clear that up. Roll that forward into this new bill. What happened there could have suspended my right to keep and bear arms because the new HR, because the way this new bill is worded, if you've got outstanding traffic tickets, seatbelt tickets, uh, all the amount of stuff in totality that this would cover would be anything. And for someone like myself who had no idea and even had a current iPass with the, with the state, um, you know, you're still screwed. So there's all these backwater things you can get tagged for. And then all of a sudden, now now you lose the right to keep and bear arms. Um, you can't buy a gun. Um, it, it's, it's, it's just a horrible setup all the way around. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It, it, that was a long way about my personal story about how this would have affected me had this been the law then. Right, and have, have you had a chance to look at the uh, fix Nix le uh, legislation, etc.? Not uh, since it's been combined, no. Yeah, combined. see, that's the thing. Like, I haven't seen what's been combined. I guess I could send a link to a PDF to you guys, mm -hmm. so you can. Uh, here, I'll put that in the chat right now. Let me know if that works. I'll put it in the chat for us, so you guys can check that out. Um, and you know. Basically, it seems, Kevin, like the NRA is pushing this and happy that these two things have been uh, mixed together. And it's to them, it's part of their strategy, like we saw a few months ago, where they, you know, they strategize to do things on our behalf, I guess, supposedly. Yeah, I, you know, I, I did watch um, live today. I haven't had a chance to really review it since the Knicks was linked to it, just because I was traveling and moving all around. However, uh, I did see that the the NRA was behind the bill. 
I can't say whether it's a good idea or a bad idea yet now in totality because I haven't read the revisions. Like until I do that, I don't I don't mm -hmm. really know what to say. Uh, the right. bill itself, HR 38 itself, I'm with Joe. It was a great thing out the gate. And I think now, and I know we're focused on the NRA, but I think now there had to be a lot of give and take on a lot of different sides to allow you know these these small revisions to be dumped into it. So it's basically to me what they're saying is sure we'll give you what you want, uh, but it's going to come with more restrictions than anybody's going to want to deal with. Um, so I don't you know I, I saw Mac was was really upset. He's even got a new T-shirt out. <laughs> so, um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, I saw the mm -hmm. T-shirt. Um, and I can I can get from a gist the way he's explaining it why he would be upset with the NRA backing it. I just can't confirm or deny it was a good idea until I, I like to be educated on things and read them for myself. But um, I did see today through certain channels that a lot of people, a lot of different organizations are in support of it. Uh, it passed today. What about I don't know what about three hours ago or so? Yeah, not too long ago. Um, you know, there's lots of articles on it passing, honestly, in the news. Yeah, yeah, and what they're doing is call, and they're calling it the, um, you know, they're, they're calling it the reciprocity bill, but inside of it is the fix next legislation. And who knows what else they copied and pasted when they, when they put that in there. I mean, that's the big thing that I worry about. Like, okay, you have a good bill on its own that most of us support. Um, I think there's people out there that say, why do we even need to have this reciprocity thing? We have the Second Amendment. Can't really argue that too much, but this is a step in, a, in the right direction of um, making things happen, right? And I think most of us can get behind that. The fix Nix thing is kind of dubious, right? Like, we already have Nix. It already has a lot of problems. There's already a lot of people that that unjustly suffer because of what's going on with Nix. And then now they're like, oh, we're gonna fix that. We're gonna add some more things. They're gonna make it better. And it's not necessarily gonna make it better in every way. And then when they combine those two things, what makes us think they didn't copy and paste other stuff in there and then other things won't get pasted in there. It's too complicated. Just let this bill stand on its own and either make it to the White House and get signed by the president or not. Yeah, yeah I'm with that. At, at, absolutely. There's, um, there's, well, rem remember when the NRA uh, supported the, uh, they call it the, well, we call it the Veterans Disarmament Act. Basically, a number of veterans are coming back. I think it was what, damn near a uh, quarter of a million vet returning veterans or returned veterans that got denied their right to keep and bear arms simply because they had sought psychiatric help for some of their PTSD issues. These weren't mm -hmm. people that were dishonorably discharged. These weren't, they didn't have any, they just supported, they just went for a little bit of moral support. Um, from returning after some of the things that they mm -hmm. saw, which is completely understandable. I mean, yeah, I, I and it know, shouldn't be held against them. I mean, you know, absolutely. Well, as yeah. you know, the Gun Owners of America was out beating the drums that this, you know, this was a bad bill. Uh, the NRA swept it under the rug. They got it passed, and then, of course, a quarter million veterans later, being denied the right to keep and bear arms. Here we are. Um, there's another situation where the Gun Owners of America have been out in front of uh, the Fix Nix bill for a while, and there's more uh, mental uh, status. Uh, attachments that were on the original one. And like I said, I don't know how much of that made it into this new one yet um, since it's so recent, but there was a lot of stuff in there where, you know, the theoretically you could have somebody, uh, you know, well, butrin is a psych psychiatric drug for a couple different things, but it's also used as a smoking cessation drug. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, somebody, somebody could have had a prescription for that. Um, some of their medical records get jumbled up and now all of a sudden they can't buy a gun. Mm -hmm. um, and and then obviously on top of that, what we have is you know basically a de facto backdoor gun registration that's being continued, and uh, and furthered, um, you know, so it's it, it's really it's really unfortunate where we're at right now and that they put these two together. Um, I contact my Congress people. I know uh, I would suggest you know everybody not just contact your your Congress Congress people, but also get a hold of the NRA. Um, make sure they know you're not happy. You know, and when you call up and complain, give them your member number so they know you're an actual member and make sure uh, they understand and they hear it. I mean, eventually, eventually something's going to get through to them. And about the only thing it seems like gets through to them is is through the coffers. Um, you know, I, I haven't canceled my membership with them, but, you know, I'm, I'm suspending any money that I would have donated to the NRA is going to go directly to the Gun Owners of America now. I've okay. shifted all my focus there. And, and I've been that way for a while. Um, I've been on and off with the NRA, but I've been a Gun Owners of America member for 15 solid years now. Well, uh, I, and so here's the thing, like if the NRA thinks they have valid points here, 
What they need to do is take time to explain to us these valid points before they get behind things. It seems like they just go behind the scenes, make deals. Um, this thing is going really fast. If you mm -hmm. notice, it, what's happening is all happening really fast. It's getting some kind of bipartisan support. And when you have things like this happening really fast, there's a lot of stuff in there, you know, that that's going to wind up in there. And there's probably already in there that you don't really want. It's not really going to be something you want, but they're like, listen, we got to get something to go through and pass some stuff. Let's all dump this in here and then make it happen. <clears throat> and I think um, I see folks saying that, um, that, you know, Gun Owners of America is explaining why they think that this is not a good idea. These two things shouldn't be mixed. And the Nix fix on its own is terrible. And the NRA is just going, oh, listen, we made a deal. This is just, you know, next level 3D chess. You don't understand it, but just deal with it and move on. And I think it's all, <clears throat> excuse me, it's all going really too fast. What do you think about that, Kevin? I think that um, there was one thing, and not to keep bringing up Mac, but there was one thing he said uh, that I can, I think it helps separate the argument with the NRA. His beef, as he specified, is really with the ILA and not necessarily the NRA as a whole. All right. So but what the NRA does, and they're, they're, I'm talking about the, not the ILA, the NRA, with, with, with the community efforts and the movements and things like that. Um, I'm totally with the idea. If you don't like what somebody's doing, yeah, take it over and direct it in the way you want it to go. I'm totally with that. Um, I do think that to totally turn our backs on a lot of the efforts that the NRA backs is not a smart idea. However, I can definitely understand from the ILA, you know, the whole political division, why anybody is upset. Now, I didn't have a solid idea of that until like 30 seconds ago because mm -hmm. Now I know within the Knicks fix, according to this link you just sent me, they also slipped in the bump fire stock ban. Did they? Uh, yeah, they slipped it in in a way of saying that they want the attorney general, I believe, of each state to report. Let me read it. Uh, I looked for keywords for Knicks. Let me get down here to it. They want the attorney general to report how often bump stocks are used. So uh, it's section six. In commission okay. of a crime. I see it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, in general, um, what it specifies the number of instances in which a bump stock has been used to commission of a crime, specifies the type of firearms in which the bump stock was used, and then they want the attorney general to write an opinion about the bump stocks, and I don't know why you can write an opinion about that. Um, but now, and then when you get to page 21, uh, 3B, they want to define the bump stock, and that's where it gets scary. Because as we know, they're always focused on, like here, they're trying to say, oh, anything that moves the trigger faster, uh, using the inertia of a firearm. How many things can that say that applies to? Oh, you? that's lots that's of everything. Things. Lots of things. Yeah. yeah. That, the easy still, thing still, still, that, this, is another, this is another bomb that the NRA uh, basically built, you know. Um, and just to get back to that shirt, I, I wanted to pull up that shirt that you're talking about with yeah. Mac was talking about. Um, it's on Forge from Freedom, says not, not real activists <laughs> um, so that you can get that on Forge from Freedom I'm guessing on the military arms uh, collection right there we also have a collection I'm just you know just a shameless plug going yourself. along there but I think this is another bomb that the NRA created right when when this thing happened in Vegas and the media kept pushing and, and then Trump went out there and, and kind of opened the door by saying we're gonna do something then the NRA came out and say you know, we want the ATF to go back and look at at uh, bump stocks, even though this had already been dealt with. And everyone was like, oh, mm -hmm. this is genius. It's next level, because when they look at it, they're going to find out that it's totally legal and you're not going to do anything about it. Yesterday, we found out, other than what you're talking about, Kevin, here in the bill, which like Obamacare, healthcare, you know, there's so much stuff that's going to be packed in there that we really need to take time to think about what's going on. But, you know, they're stuffing that in here. They're, they're pushing for this again, and it's something that the NRA said it was okay. And the NRA, they said they support machine gun, the machine gun ban. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's a lot of things going on in here. I think the NRA, from, um, from, from what I've heard, was in support of the first Knicks. You know, they were. When, when that was created. They were. You they know? were a huge actually supporter of it. Yeah, and here it has problems that now it apparently has to get fixed, and they're in support of those fixes. So my thing is, I think I agree with what you're saying, Kevin, that we shouldn't just necessarily throw the baby out with the bathwater. And, um, you know, 
we just like with the bill, we may want to take some time to figure out what's going on here with the NRA, but it's getting more and more clear to me that the NRA just does whatever the hell they want to do, and then they tell the rest of us to go along with it. This has been going on for a long time. Yeah, and that, and that has to end, and they have to explain themselves thoroughly. There's, there, there's not a position that the Gun Owners of America doesn't take where they actually send out a memo to everybody on their list, they post it on their website, and they explain exactly why they're for or against something, point by point. And the NRA never does that. They, they, put, up, uh, they yeah. put up the sponsored post all day that's been in my feeds um, about support uh, HR 38. Yeah. And of course, you know, it, it, the nice thing is there is a thousand comments on that Instagram thread right now. Yeah, and, I'm sure they're going to shut that down. Ninety-nine, 99 out of those, a thousand are all you know, f you for uh, for the fixed nicks. Yeah, um, and, and people are telling us that the NRA wrote the the first bill, and yeah, that's you know that's true. Mm -hmm. But here's my thing, Kevin. I, yeah. I, you know, for, and for either one of you guys can jump in on it. It's not just now that the NRA has been doing this. It's not just six months ago. It's not just a year ago when they decided, oh, we're gonna we're gonna support Donald Trump. Here you go. He's he's our man. You know, they didn't really they're not really consulting with anyone. And maybe that's our fault, because maybe we're assuming the NRA is going to consult with us or care about what we think instead of just going. Yeah, we got together in a room somewhere and we decided this is what you guys have to deal with. And we're giving you marching orders. Just go out there and support it. Everything's going to be OK. I think that we have to stop doing that. This has been going on for a long time, and we have to pull back that kind of support until they care about our voice again. And they're not just throwing up people out there that maybe look like us so we can go, oh, the NRA is down with us. Let's go along with the whatever plan, marching orders they give us. You know, I think that the, the way to fix that is to treat um, the board, the, the A, give the board more power overall, and B, after you give the board more power, and have a certain amount of the board strictly involved in ILA stuff, like have a good majority of them in ILA stuff, guys that qualify for it, of course. Um, and then let's treat them just like we treat our state reps. Hey, you as the board member that represents this part of the country, this is how we feel about this. And let those board members go back and no different than p politicians and their constituents, allow them to go back and voice how we feel. That way we always have somebody to hold immediately accountable and it will give the board more power so they can actually go speak for people. Because uh, us as individuals saying that we can say it to we're blue in the face, it's never going to reach anybody. But if we had somebody that represented, what, let's just say uh, 175,000 NRA members, and they went and they spoke for us, and they had the power, I think that that will help change things. Yeah. And you know, the, the NRA board is one of those things where most of those, well, half, about half of them you've never heard of. Several of them are involved and, you know, and you've heard of, but there are 76 people on that, mm -hmm. 76 board members. That's a crap load of people. And they talk about, oh, well, you know, we need to take over the board of the NRA, which, yeah, I'm 100 percent behind. But it's not easy if it's 76 dudes. There's like, 76 yeah, how many dudes do you have to get in there to get some control? Right. You know? um, um, and I think uh, let me just quickly. Um, uh, let's see here. I had someone agreeing with you, Kevin saying that we, you know, uh, NRA, ILA has no oversight by the NRA members. Board members have no say over NRA, ILA. Right. That's why I think that some of the yeah. members ought to be segmented to have that power for ILA. Over, first of all, they need power overall. Second, we need a lot of people involved in really, really the ILA portion of it. And then third of all, we need to hold them accountable. That's why I think that they ought to have, hey, you're responsible for Indiana. You're responsible for Missouri. You're responsible for Florida. And you have to go work with the people in that state. That is your yeah. territory. You come back and report how they're feeling. Yeah, but I think you're expecting them to be somehow democratic. Yeah. <laughs> you I, know, I, but I, they're not, man. They are like a dictatorship. I get we it. give them money. They tell us what the hell to do we march along or we don't march along and i think what you're what you're seeing is a growing louder and louder chorus of people that are just pissed off and sick and tired of the bullshit from the nra that they're just telling us just go along with this thing don't worry about it you know don't look at the man behind the curtain yeah i mean yeah yeah and you know, I, I, oh sure i i've heard a lot of good so so it, this analogy has been used for other things before um, but, you know, I think I think it bears repeating the NRA needs or the NRA ILA, at least they need a certain amount of controversy and they need 
a boogeyman out there. They need something to go against, right? So they supported the the assault weapons ban originally in '94. Once they put in the sunset clause, and and, and the the good uh, the good analogy is let's say you know we're talking about a kingdom where there's dragons, and you got like the world's best uh, dragon slayer, and he winds up finding the nest. He slays the the mama dragon, and there's a bunch of baby dragons there. Mm-hmm. They're they're babies. He could kill them all, but if he kills them, there's going to be no more dragons. He's out of a job. Mm-hmm. So what is he? What do you do? Do you kill all the dragons like you're supposed to, or do you let a couple live so you still have a job in a few years? Yeah, yeah. And 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 I think that perfectly explains what the NRA has been doing since the 1960s, or at least the ILA. Because since the 1960s, they've been heavily involved in legislations from the 68 Gun Control Act all the way through. They supported the 86 machine gun ban, the the Reagan ban, and of course, you know. A lot of people love to talk about Reagan. Well, I mean, Reagan banned guns as president. He banned guns. <laughs> Let's really get people's opinion. Yeah, this is not just Demo- I mean, this is not just yeah. the NRA, yeah. and it's not just Democrats. It's Republicans yeah. that are getting involved in this thing too. But I think that they're having conversations with the NRA that we're not privy to, but we're mm-hmm. hearing that this stuff is going on, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you know, we've got to be active, and we've got to hold our feet to the fire. And one of the biggest things to do is withhold all the money from the NRA ILA, every single penny, give it to the gun owners of America. Membership with gun owners of America is 20 bucks for a year. It's best 20 bucks you're going to spend. You get, you, you don't get flashy magazines, but you do get newsletters. You do get update updates and they work hard. They yeah. truly do. And they've been behind the scenes on a lot of these court cases, the Heller case, for example, it was the gun owners of America um, that really pushed that one through when the NRA was trying to sabotage it. And people don't realize that the Heller case is almost sabotaged by the NRA. And then afterwards, uh, the NRA tries to claim victory and push everybody else out of the equation. They Mm -hmm. they do not. The NRA does not play well in the sandbox at all. Yeah. And I think one of the you know, here's the thing, Kevin, Um, you know, from my opinion of you, you're a good guy, right? Thank you you face up to things. You raise you, you raise your kids. This you know with the same things that you believe. To if they make mistakes and all that, you know they own up to it. You know, or if if someone doesn't agree with you or they're angry with you, you're willing to sit down and talk to them and all that. And that's what I admire about you. But the NRA is not dealing with this that way. And that's that's what's like pushing people even further and further away. I believe because right now they're going out there and saying any of us who don't get it, who don't understand, that we're the enemy. Even us gun guys, uh, they're calling uh, uh, gun gun rights groups like gun owners across America and, and other groups out there like fake pro gun groups. Mm-hmm. No, I haven't seen you know. it. Well, I mean, I, here no, I'm, not saying, I'm not saying you're not telling the truth. Yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. So, huh. I mean, you know, this is the thing. Like, why wouldn't they sit down and talk to people, talk about these things and say, OK, well, we disagree with that. And this is why we're doing something and like actually. Uh, you know, face this head on instead of trying, you know, um, here, here's a quote from someone from the NRA. We are in the thick of the legislative process and so-called pro-gun group, which is nothing more than a fundraising entity, is spreading lies about the fix next legislation that was attached to the Concealed Carry Reciprocity Act. Oh, my God. That is so rich. Um, fundraising yeah. only group. Oh, my yeah, God. Yeah, a spokesperson for the NRA Institute. His name is Lars um, Dalside, Dalside, or something like that. I don't know how to pronounce yeah, his name. Close. It's D A L S E I D E. Dalside, or something like that. Huh? Reasons. That, so stuff like that it, it, it leads to this, and this is how I believe. Like, think about your friendships, right? You think about friendships or relationships you have in general. You do not have a real relationship with anybody if you always get along. That is a falsehood. That relationship is not real. OK, so if when you get to the point to where you disagree, a we shouldn't be calling each other names. B, you should be sitting down listening to the person across from you. So um, if we have a disagreement with the way that the NRA is conducting business or say, let's just say the GOE and the NRA, let's just put those two entities together. If they're disagreeing, then we definitely shouldn't be name calling. That's never OK. Uh, but you should be able to sit down and maturely discuss what's going on. Explain your size. You're not always going to agree 100 percent, but at least you have an understanding because that's the reason why our gun rights are tugged and pulled at all the time. When when was the last time you saw moms demand action and 
uh, Bloomberg argue in public? Never. Um, the day after never. <laughs> the day <laughs> after a snowball. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they they don't do that. Um, yeah. Every town for gun safety doesn't argue with um, uh, moms to man action, or they don't go out and argue with all these other anti gun groups. And if they do, they do it in private. They don't do it publicly. Yeah, they handle their business behind the scenes. Right. But we don't. We don't have that opportunity. We don't have. I, I see what you're saying, and I agree with you. I think people should be able to, like you and I. We have discussions here on this stuff. Sometimes people have seen it. We get heated, and you're like, "Oh, wait a second, you know," and you pull me up, or I'm like, "Hey, Kevin, you got, you know, I make you look at this thing." That's how we. That's how we. Um, we we settle things. We get things solved. We wrap our minds around things, right? right. That's why I'm. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing now. But the NRA can give two shits about that. That's it, the that's the scariest thing about them to me. They do not care. They look at anyone questioning what they're doing as the enemy, including us. And that so, is that is that is not fair. That that's just not a good way to look at things. It's not right. And it, another local example to me. Um, not, uh, several months ago, we had a county they wanted to do in the county. They wanted to pass a ban on shooting within a thousand feet of a residence. So anywhere in the county, if you're within a thousand feet of residence, you can't shoot. Um, which, of course, if you try and stick a pin in a map and go a thousand feet in any direction from any residence, including your own residence, mm -hmm. <laughs> you pretty much can't shoot anywhere. Yeah, exactly. Um, That's a de facto ban. Yeah, it's a de facto ban, exactly. Yeah. So, um, same so, thing they try to pull with, um, with with drones. Remember? Yeah. You know yeah. that's a tactic that Canada used with drones. They basically made laws in Canada where it's illegal to fly a drone anywhere. You can't yeah. do it this far from a school. You can't do it this far from this thing and that thing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Hold on one second. Hold on to that thought, Joe. Moose right. Puma just gave us uh, twenty bucks. Oh wow. So, um, you know, thank you for that. He, he says his comment is hashtag no inch for a mile. Am I reading that right? Hashtag no. No inch for a mile. Yeah, no inch for a mile. Yeah, give them an inch, they take a mile. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so there you go. Thanks a lot yeah. for that, Moose. Yeah. So, I mean, I think that that's a de facto ban. That's what you were saying. Go ahead. Yeah. So, so, so my point to that was. Um, you know, I started beating the war drum. So I have contacts with the NSSF, uh, National Shooting Sports Foundation, uh, with Gun Owners of America, and I really don't have any contacts with the NRA for any sort of uh, mobilizing. I mean, you know, the NRA has a huge mailing list, right? Their email list. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How hard is it for them to shoot an email to the people in our zip code to say, hey, this county is voting uh, you know, they're talking about it on the county agenda and they could pass it, uh, you know, in the next meeting, which is a week from now, you might want to either call your county commissioners or show up. Right. How hard is that? Well, I'll tell you, it's not hard because Gun Owners of America did it for me. The NSSF did it for me on their alerts. NRA, fucking crickets. And because and they're, too, they're too big to fail. I mean, it's like, you know, exactly. And, and, and here's the thing behind the scenes. You had NSSF and Gun Owners of America talking to each other. They were talking to each other about this. The state guys for the original in the NSSF case, the GOA, the state guy, they were talking to each other. They communicated, they coordinated behind the scenes. Now, now obviously, you know, it wasn't necessarily the top of their radar as like a massive thing, but they talked about, they communicated, they talked to each other. And I talked to both of them, both of the state guys or the state and then the regional for the other one. And yeah, nothing out of NRA. Absolutely nothing. Yeah, I think so, uh, uh, Rock Humper says NSSF isn't much better. You know, I kind of agree with that. They're not that much better. Um, you know, they've got yeah, issues, but yes, you know, I recently, when I was in Atlanta, I actually met someone trying. from NSSF. It seems like they're trying. You yeah, know, what, trying. We, what we need is people who are trying. I mean, I think the NRA realizes there's some members that are very angry at them. Right. Mm -hmm. But they're not making an attempt to reach out to those people and say, like, what's the problem? Why do you guys have these issues? How can we explain it to you? Why wouldn't you do that? Why wouldn't you want to get us on your side? Unless you're just like, screw these guys. We can out talk them. We could out shout them. No one's going to listen to what they're doing and we'll get our way no matter what. Well, I, I think that's it. And, and I also think they don't want to lend any legitimacy or credence to any other organization. 
they they want they view the the slice of the money the second amendment money pie as 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 they want that whole pie they don't realize that there's enough segment there to support at least a couple of different groups um and and i think that's why they don't want it they don't want to acknowledge them they don't want to lend them any credence they don't want to do anything that might not they want to still be that the one and only gorilla in the room not just the 800 pound gorilla but they want to be the only gorilla absolutely kevin i'm going to let you say what you have to say um we've got right now we're approaching like 200 people viewing this live right now so thank you to everyone that's watching this um that's amazing i mean it's just me kevin and joe we're not like big super uh youtube guys you know um so we appreciate folks tuning in to us and listening to this. Please click the thumbs ups. Please share this with, uh, with um, other folks out there and let them know that we're having this conversation and let us know what you think about it in the chat or otherwise. Okay, go ahead, Kevin. Sorry about that. Oh, no, you're fine, man. Uh, definitely. Yes, that's, that's, that's big ups. Appreciate that. Now, 200 people, 36 likes. We got to do something about that. Oh, oh <laughs> that's all. No, no, there's got to be thumbs ups, guys. Yeah, you got to get some thumbs up yeah. on that. Hit the thumbs ups. We have to get those thumbs ups, okay? Kevin, you keep an eye on those thumbs ups, okay? I want to know what it's doing. And everyone out there, we need you to click those thumbs ups and we need you to share this with people. Let's get this out. Let's let people know that, you know, how we feel about this. I created this so you guys can have a voice. So the voiceless can have a voice. Because it seems to me like in the gun community, in the gun world, like, like Joe's saying that, you know, only the big dogs get listened to. So what I'm trying to do here is, you know, if some of us little chihuahuas yap enough, <laughs> you know, people might hear what we have to say. So please click the thumbs ups. We we really need it and we appreciate it. Okay. Um, and I, I would say this. So in, in full disclosure, I am a, a, a fan of a lot of people in the NRA. Right. I'm friends with a lot of those guys. So I get when I'm when you're having conversations with somebody face to face and they're saying they're misunderstood, you know, you, you take them for face value now. Am I good buddies with a lot of people in the ILA side of things? No, I don't know a lot of those guys. Okay, so normally when I'm asking questions to guys, they don't. It's a it's a big company, if if you will, right? So they don't. One doesn't necessarily know what the other one's doing, in a lot yeah. of in a lot of sense, right? And that's one of the big problems. However, allow me to play devil's advocate for a second, and now I'm just talking about exposure and um, accessibility to people, and I think every gun organization can do a better job joe, joe was just showing uh his nra card by the way go ahead kevin joe was just uh, showing his nra th card. Th this is th i was just since you mentioned it sorry kevin no this is if you look at the date on that 98 1998 just just yeah. to give you j just for just for full disclosure there so that so, so that uh people don't say oh i hate the nra or i haven't been a member or whatever and i've got i've got member cards here from every year you know Here's a yeah. 2015. You know, I, I could keep oh, throwing them up there, throwing but. the NRA cards up. Uh -oh. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, we all we all support the NRA, you know. Right. Yeah, yeah. It, it, but there's Sorry, nothing. Kevin, wrong. go ahead. Uh -huh. there, there's nothing wrong with telling. There's nothing wrong with telling your friend you're wrong. There's nothing wrong with that, and that doesn't mean that you can't. You can't. You're still not boys at the end of the day. It just means, hey, man, this thing you're doing is is, is something I don't agree with. And we need to do it better. And so there's nothing wrong with that. And so that that's why I kind of when people are like. You know, F them. I'm like, all right, that's how you feel, dude. It's a little strong in my opinion. However, think about one of your friends that's a good person, but they start going down the wrong path. You try to grab them by the collar and you curse them out. You yell at them. You do whatever you got to do and you drag them back. Right. And that's all I'm saying with that. Now, I, I agree. Just that point. I just want to make this point, by the way, um, Joe. McTagg says expires in 98 question mark. So he wants to know if that expires or that says since 98. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I've got, so I've got, I've got cards here. This one is, this one is one of my first NRA cards. Oh, okay. That's the first one. Yeah. Because yeah, they give you a new one every year to keep you uh, subscribing. So, 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 for people, so, for people slavery. <laughs> so for people who don't, uh, who, who don't know my position on this, I am for organizations like this. I am and have been completely opposed to lifetime memberships. Um, I want an organization, and it doesn't matter what it is, uh, you know, anything along these lines, uh, to earn my membership each and every year. So a lot of people say, "Oh, well, you could have had a lifetime membership already." Well, it's not. It's not about you know saving money on a lifetime membership, be it the NRA, GOA, or whoever. I want them to earn my membership every single year. And there are years that I have not been a member of the NRA. And I've told them why. Um, 
uh, you know, and, and I am currently an NRA member and just coming up to the election. Yeah, that's uh, how I've know. been doing it year by year. I haven't been given yeah. my money all at once. Uh, Walter from Safety Harbor says he's been in there um, since the 80s, <laughs> you know, um, and he's a life member, uh, you know. So, yeah, look. Kevin, what you're saying, I think I agree with you in that first section of what you said that, you know, if your friend does the wrong thing or if your friend has like halitosis, you know, <laughs> if, if his breath stinks or whatever, if he's a real friend, he will appreciate you saying something to him and saying, look, dude, you know, this thing's going on and he won't hate you for it. But I think that's what we've been trying to do with the NRA and they, and they don't want to listen to us. You know, I'm, we're, I'm trying really hard to not attack specific people over there because we do know specific people. I don't think horrible, bad things about those guys. Lots of those guys, to be honest with you, they just work there. When you talk to them, they're like, dude, I just work there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So that's, that's really what it comes down to. So I just wanted to throw that in before you continued your. No, that's fine, but now and to kind of segue off of that, then I'll make my 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 final kind of point on it. Um, so Tim, you know, everybody loves Tim because Tim is like, this is what the hell it is, and this is how I feel, right? Mm -hmm. Well, you look at Tim being his own big entity, and today I think it was on Instagram, um, Noir commented on Max post, and but instead of bickering, Noir said, "I'm going to read what you're complaining, what you're saying, and I'm going to call you." And to me, that's how relationships are bonded. You know, hey, I disagree with it. We're not going to go back and forth. We're going to have a phone call. So for like guys on the opposite ends of the table, now I'm talking about the people themselves. When when Noor will say, hey, yeah, Tim, I'm going to pick up the phone and call you. That's a good sign. That's at least somebody exchanging dialogue, right? Now to the to the the other end, and that's the, the that's the way it should be. And I'm not trying to encourage anyone to go after uh, Colin Noir or any other individual that you know, that, that works for the NRA, other than the dudes at the top. If they're at the top, they get paid the big bucks so they can handle this. But there's other people that just work there and maybe inside they're trying to change this. But these guys are not freaking listening to us. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, yeah, so at some point we have to start like coming after them. You know, I, if you do something about the NRA, even if it's positive, dude, if you do anything about the NRA and you use their, you put their logo in something and you're a gun guy trying to promote them, a lawyer sends you a message. Yeah, you can't use that. Yeah. You know what you, yeah, you sign a lot of that documentation even when you get their instructor credits. Yeah. That you can't, you can't use it. Yeah. You get a lot of that lingo. Yeah. You're right about that. Yeah. And I understand it to some extent. I'm just saying that they're, that, that they, that they will react to immediately. Like we did a video here episodes back, way back. And we had, you know, we put, the, we were talking about something about the NRA. We put the thing up there, and immediately someone emailed me, "Oh, you can't use that." We're, we're, you know, we're having this discussion. Where the hell are the people from the NRA? I, I get it. I'm not. I'm not. I can't argue logic. I mean, you can't argue logic. You can't. You know. And I think that's why I think back to my. I, and I've tried. To, by the way, I've tried to get Colin Noir to come on the show, and I'm like I said, I don't want to knock him, but you know, it's it's not easy, man. Yeah. Because these I, guys just work there. Yeah. I think that um, the the only other thing that I will say is this: if the if because I'm not necessarily agreeing or disagreeing with all the points, but if let's just right now Fantasyland, and I'm I'm thinking outreach, and like I said before, every gun organization can do a lot better at this. However, if the NRA closed doors tomorrow, just shut down. Who is going to do not the ILA, ILA side of things? So I know we can argue GOA will step in and handle that. So not the ILA side of things. But I have personally never seen GOA do any community efforts anywhere around me. Never, not once, ever. And I've been around this stuff for a long time. Uh, I will say this, NSSF at least has a division that's meant for outreach. So they do have that. But who's going to step up and take on that big old chunk of cookie? Who's going to step up and get out in the communities and, and back guys and, and get a lot of community efforts going outside of the Second Amendment rocks and let's have gun rights? Who's going to infiltrate and help? bridge gaps and bring communities together because they're the only ones outside of the NSSF now having their division. They're the only ones that are active in any of that kind of stuff. I've never seen GOA do that ever. So like, why aren't they investing into that kind of stuff? Cause I've never seen them do it. Yeah. That's a good question. Before, before, right. That's a good question. Before no. we answer it, the Tyvon show gave us 10 bucks. Here's right. his comment. Please share the stream to your Facebook and ask them to join the conversation at Hank, great live event. So, you know, um, yeah, please do that. And by the way, tag the NRA when you do it, because we're talking about them, you know, and, and say, how come you guys aren't in on this conversation? 
You know, so, um, so and there was a thing about if you if you do if you're a yearly member, you can't vote. But if you're five years consecutively uh, a, a member, you can vote because I did that. Lola did that mm -hmm. this year. So if yep. you're consecutive, you can vote. Yeah, that, that that's why that last card I just flashed. You saw I did the five year. Um, I don't know the last one I flashed. It's the five year membership anyway. And it continues on to so 2015. So obviously I'm a voting member now. Um, but and, um, as to the Gun Owners of America, that's a great point. Their organization is a legislative. Uh, so like you made the distinction between NRA and NRA ILA, mm -hmm. the Gun Owners of America is a legislative uh, uh, f driven and focused organization. Okay. Um, so, you know, like NSSF has different divisions and, you know, so that's what, that's why you probably haven't seen any more community outreach stuff like that. They do get involved in anything that's legislative related. Um, but to my knowledge, they don't, I, I don't know if and when they'll grow into that, but membership wise with Gunners America, you know, they're about a quarter of what the NRA is. I think they've got like one and a half million members, mm -hmm. one and a quarter million members. So it would be nice if every NRA member kicked in 20 bucks over to the GOA side. And once they grew enough, maybe they could have a Gun Owners of America uh, outreach side or, or something yeah. along those lines. Listen, I, I think we need multiple things. I am yeah. not advocating for the yeah. NRA to disappear, disappear tomorrow. Do no, not want no, that. No, I am no, not no. advocating for that. I know some people are in the chat. I respect those guys who, <laughs> who are just like, they're there. And I respect it because they're my friends. But, you know, I've been in this for a certain amount of time. There's people who have been in it longer. So they're probably more upset than me and all that kind of stuff. I think we need all kinds of different groups in here um, fighting this fight the, the way that I look at it. You know, um, we need everyone in here fighting the fight in their own way and reaching out to people in their own way. That's why we went to Atlanta to support what Marge Touré is doing with Black Guns Matter in the event that they had um, in Atlanta, you know, and, you know, I didn't necessarily I didn't see the NRA supporting that which is fine I don't expect them to support it what I'm telling you is we could take our money and we can give it to people like that um, black guns matter they're out there in the community yep you and know they're reaching out to the community let's give them some money and help them do that hey whoa 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 yes you should however don't forget about who's sitting on this damn panel <laughs> yes okay all right so Go let's ahead. move on okay let's move out. Is my boy all right now my Maj is my guy but let's not forget about aiming for the truth. Let's not forget about that approach to it. And that's absolutely, why I'm like, absolutely, yes. That's why I'm like, um, it, 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 you gotta, you gotta. So to me, I know we get caught up in this legislative stuff, and we should, right? We cannot ignore that. But I'm always so. If GOA said, "Hey, we want you guys to push for us to to have more memberships," my first response is going to be, "What are you doing to grow the community?" And so for me, I'm like, hey, I get the fact that you're legislating and you're doing things. So I won't be against you because that's that's great. But if you're trying to like yank my my finances, I'm like, you know, your mission still has to align with mine because depending on where people come from, a lot of people with NRA can say, well, yeah, they do this, this, and this, and maybe I don't care about the politics, which is a mistake. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Uh, however, other groups outside of the NRA and now the NSSF, they they aren't. They're just saying, give me something because I'm protecting you. What a lot of people don't understand what they're being protected from. So they're not going to invest in you because they yeah. don't see. Any but it takes time. I think it take. I think it's just not that easy. We've most of us have been giving money to the NRA all this time. I yep. think that's the thing that's going on. And as Joe is saying here, um, gun owners across America, they're trying to have, you know, fight the wars of, of laws that are going on. And, and maybe not necessarily so much getting into the community, but everyone needs to do it. Yeah, we need to support people like you. We all need to support each other in all the different ways that we do what we do. This needs to be a complete thing going at this because I think if we don't do it that way, look, right now you can have, who knows what they'll stuff into this bill that we think is a good thing. And next thing you know, like we go backwards in rights. And we are, we're sitting here thinking, man, we're going to get reciprocity. It's going to be freaking awesome. And, and when we actually, when that thing, you remember when Nancy Pelosi says you got to like make it law and then you find out what's in there? Yeah. yeah. You know, we will wind up like that. And then when it's law, then we find out what's in there. Right now, to this day, we cannot get rid of Obamacare. We are still dealing with that nonsense. Mm -hmm. And I could tell you, I have Crohn's disease. I've had it for 20 years. My, my health care has gotten worse over the last eight years. Okay. So and we're, we're still fighting that. So the thing is, is that I think that we need to get everyone in there fighting the battle, keeping everyone aware of what's going on. And I'm not saying, you know, that, like I said, we shouldn't 
just burn down the NRA. We shouldn't do the, you know, every town's job for them. But but we need to still be heard because if we're not heard, we're going we're going to lose interest one way or the other in the NRA. And they're not listening to us. They're just pushing things down our throats. They're just making backroom meetings and doing all this next level chess nonsense. And and, and I just don't think it's it's a horrible thing, man, that they're doing. You know. Hey, can I address a, one comment in the the chat? Okay. That I think is important. So lights out one eighty three eggs. What does that mean exactly? Air quotes, reaching out to the community. So, uh, lights out one eighty three. Let me let me answer you uh, shortly but directly. For far too long, for far too long, it has been uh, industry that has been dominated by one particular group of people. Period. Okay, is white men. Period. That's what the gun industry has been dominated by. Over the last decade or so, we've started seeing an influx. Now, I'm not saying that that's their fault. What I'm saying is there are a lot of people that believe because of what they see that that's only for white men. And that's just a fact. That's just the way it goes. So as we start telling people that, hey, it's for more than white men, you even have white men telling you it's for more than white men, we have to go out and together collectively say, hey, this is not for what you think. Let us grab, let us educate, let us inform, and let us bring you into the lifestyle. Because our approach so far has been, oh, you hate guns? Beer, bacon, America. Suck it. And that approach is not going to work. That's just keeping people far. So when we want organizations that have the strength, and if GOA doesn't have it right now, that's fine. But organizations that have the strength to help reach out to communities and say, hey, guys, Asian, Black, Latino, whatever it may be, poor, whites, whomever, this is for everybody. This is a freedom we should all enjoy. Here are different ways we are trying to get your attention and bring you into the fold for we can increase our resources and for we can increase our strength. Because as long as we leave people out in the fray, as long as we leave them just out in the wilderness, it is very easy for the anti-gunners to get in their ear. They're their neighbors, they're their teachers, they're their co-workers. They're around them all the time. They're on our social media feeds, they're on TV. They are constantly feeding this BS into people in all these subliminal ways. And if gun people, if we don't get out and ride this same roller coaster with, with truth and power, and all we do is stay in these damn political offices and things like that, we are never going to reach the people. We're never going to have the numbers. And eventually we're going to lose. So that's what I mean by reaching out. Yeah. So w when you say that um, you're you're referring to the NRA is reaching out, right? I'm, I'm referring to every. That's why I said every all of the organizations. can. Yeah. Do well, do you feel I, do you feel like the NRA is reaching out to I, other communities? I can, I can personally say that the NRA, I have seen them do it several times and they even they even did it for me. So, yes, I can say that has happened. I can also. Okay. Say the now, NRA, when, when I was in Atlanta and I'm not, you know, trying to contradict you, like mm -hmm. I said, I believe what you say, you're a good guy. And, and obviously we know you've done things with their support. Uh, when I was in Atlanta, you know, at the Black Guns Matter event, people, people out there don't feel that way. They do not feel like the NRA is specifically reaching out to them. And I'm talking about like black people, they don't feel that way, you know? So now that can be perception. That's not necessarily 100% true. That could be perception, but you know, there's probably, you know, not just the NRA, but there's probably a lot of people that aren't reaching out to different communities. And that's why these communities vote for the people who that they do, because they feel like, oh, this community is on their side. When at the end of the day, we all know it's against their own interests, right? Yep, 100%. So, you know, I think that, the, so why is it happening? Because maybe the, the mo like we know that the NRA went out and got Colin Noir, they got a black guy to represent them. We know that they did that because we're gun guys. But the rest of the people don't know that. You know, so are they so what are they really doing to, to reach out to people other than, OK, we're going to go get this guy. We're going to go get a Latino. We're going to get some chicks. We're going to get some dudes who are in the military, you know, some some cool rock and roll, whatever people with tattoos. And we're going to throw some representatives out there. And so the gun people know the choir knows. But the rest of the world doesn't know. And I think I think to answer that, that's why the, the, the NRA, which I will say has been supportive so far, but I would always ask for more support. I believe what I've seen with my own two eyes. And if I'm mistaken, I'm mistaken. But I believe they supported Black Guns Matter. Uh, NSSF, I know they have a division now focused on that. So kudos to them and big shout out to them. And I'm not saying that like GOA is, is are the bad guys because of it. What I'm trying to say is if you are going to grow a community, if you're going to grow this thing and if you want people, if you want us to win overall, if you want us to win, we can't keep going with 
what was going on in the 90s and 2000s. You have to get back and you have to invest in people that are doing the work. So if you don't know how to do a thing, right? We all don't know how to do everything, right? So I might not know how to do car repair, just for example. I don't know how to fix cars, uh, but I have a fleet of them. But Hank is great at fixing cars. Joe is great at fixing cars. Then I'm going to pull my resources into them doing what they do and doing it well because that's what they're good at. So I'm going to put the resources into them to do the thing. Now I'm going to hold you accountable, of course, but I'm going to watch you grow what you're good at. And that's what I think a lot of the organizations are missing. You don't have to have the answer. There are people out here doing a grassroots work every single damn day. Vet them, make sure they're about business, make sure they're not going to screw you over. And if you can't do it, invest in them to do it. That way the work's getting done. That's what I'm saying. Okay. All right. So, Go ahead, Joe. Somebody, Go ahead, Joe. What do you think about all this? Well, I, I think somebody actually, there's been a couple of people who've made some comments about the percentage wise versus percentage in the industry. I honestly don't know the answer to that, but somebody else answered, asked a really good question. They said they don't understand why the black population isn't more pro gun given the historical oppression and current uh, urban violence. Um, that's going to tie in, in my opinion, to a couple different things. First, you know, all the gun control is basically Democrat backed, and it's ironic that 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 a lot of that a lot of uh, black folks are Democrat um, because of that. But I think it also ties into in, in, into something that's, you know, you look at Jewish folks, for example, and 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 what they've uh, had to endure over over millennia, not just century, you know, decades or centuries, but millennia. Right. Um, and you know, you look at what's happened, you know. Uh, and, and, you know, as far as the Germans going across Europe and just executing millions, uh, you know, a, a true genocidal march uh, across Europe trying to execute all the uh, Jews. But yet you see a lot of these Jewish folks who are very anti-gun. And for whatever reason, and, 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 and I mean, I can't speak, speak to it fully, but I the, think we're all our own worst enemies. I think that's yeah. the biggest yeah, I problem. Mean, you know, I mean, and it's not a it's not. It's not just a race thing, you know. I know some people. There might be some people there upset because we're having a little bit of a conversation from from the black perspective or point of view or whatever. I don't think it's just a race thing. We're we're like you know we're we're talking about a lot of different moving parts at the same time. But I think a lot of us are our own worst enemies. Yeah, it's human. I, it's a human nature thing. It is, you know, and and and, and it, it it's unfortunate that that. There needs to be an, an outreach type of thing because, you know, th there's nothing that says more when you want uh, the right to keep and bear arms for everyone. Um, there's nothing that says more that I, I view you as a person, I respect you, and your life has value and meaning than saying I want you to own a gun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in my opinion, because I mean, literally, the only difference between a free man and a slave is the right to defend themselves. Um, please, and you know, I don't mean to interrupt that? you, but I have to interrupt you. So let me, let me, you, what you said is a thousand freaking percent correct. And so here's why I'm saying what I'm saying. So I know we just met, so you don't know what aiming for the truth is. So aiming for the truth is the, the event that I put on and that I, that I run. And what aiming for the truth does, the whole, the truth aiming, it's a play on gun words, right? Aiming for the truth. The truth being, what's the what's the true root of violence? Why why are people so violent? Why are communities so violent? So, in that, while we're trying to dial around and hit the bullseye, my event covers mental illness or mental health. Sometimes I get yelled at if I say that wrong. Mental health, uh, rebuilding families, bringing families back together because that's the cornerstone of society, and we're missing a lot of that. All right, rebuilding families, employment, we get people jobs, and all these things are happening at the event. We get people jobs. We help your children get into better educational systems for free, okay? We train every child. If you're, if the parents come, all the children get free gun safety training to reduce the amount of accidents. We feed the community for free. We pay for a uh, public transportation round trip to show people we are investing in you. And the whole purpose is to get them there, to show them that, hey, we care about your quality of life, right? And once, and once we get your mind right and we rebuild your family and we have your kids in a better educational system that doesn't cost you any money, and once you understand what it's like to be a dad or be a mom or be co-parents, whatever the case may be, be a mar better married couple, whatever it may be, once we can show you all that, oh, and we help you manage your money after you get the job. So we cover the gauntlet, right? We bring in a lot of professionals to help out with that. That event is solely based around showing people that you can have a great quality of life. 
Now, once we get your quality of life established, you understand what you're going to get out here and you're going to work hard for, and you have these resources to help you. Once you have that, then you ask the question, okay, in your mind, as you envision using all these resources to build this great life, do you believe there are people out there that will take it from you in a heartbeat? Everybody unanimously says yes. Now let's talk about the Second Amendment. Now let's talk about you protecting yourself. Now let's talk about the lies you've been fed. And once you do that, minds open. Hearts open because you did more than slap them in the face with a gun. You actually said, I care about you. Let's invest in making your life better. And then let's talk about how you're going to defend that life that you now have quality investment into. Once you have the equity, it's easy to convince you to defend it. And that's what the gun industry has been missing. We do all this other great crap about putting up cool guns and gun videos. And yes, we need the political side. We have to have that. So I agree 100% with that. We have to make sure we're fighting against uh, politicians. But then after that, historically, we've told them, Hey, you should just shoot a gun. And that's why it's hard to get people into the conversation. Because if you've been told since you were four years old that white men with guns are prejudiced jerks, don't talk to them. Guess what? At a certain point, you believe that. You're like, okay, I'm not. And then when you interact with the police, and that's not positive, when you you run into one racist out of 10,000 people, that's the one that you happen to run into. So he doesn't help at all. And then every time you, you want to get into the gun industry, if all you constantly see making decisions and, and doing things is the same community of people you believe is not going to be accepting to you, then what the hell do you think is going to change? Like people have to open up and say, like we had somebody in the chat say they don't believe in a whole community outreach thing. Well, you should get out of guns. You shouldn't even be into it because it's about freedom. It's just not about a tool. It's about freedom. And our job as Americans is not to leave somebody in the dust because they don't have the understanding. Our job as free men and free Americans is to go out invest in them, educate them, and help them along. Because where I come from in this country, we don't leave a man behind. And yet that's what we're doing to these communities. We're saying since these anti-gun people and these anti-freedom people have your minds, we're not going to invest anything into changing that. We're just going to say, we rock, you suck, you're on your own, good luck. Instead of investing back into them and showing them that we care about you and get to know us, get to know a different side of freedom and stop falling for the falsehoods. But like the person in the chat said, we don't believe in this community outreach thing, and that's exactly why we're losing. That's exactly why we don't stand together, because we're so quick to give up. We're so quick to say it's not going to work. We don't put effort into people. We just give up on them, and then we wonder. We sit around. We play with these fucking things. We sit around, and we hold them all damn day and say, yeah, everybody should just do what we do. But you don't put a fucking ounce of energy back into investing into their lives. We don't put an ounce of energy back into changing people. We don't invest in anything in these communities, but we expect them to support us, and we expect change. It's bullshit. It'll never happen. It'll never happen until we support organizations like uh, 2A4E with Tony Simon, until we black black guns matter, until we black uh, aiming for the truth. It's not going to happen. And the crazy part is it's not a bunch of old white men sitting in a room to have the answer. The answer lies here. Here's what the answer is. And people are not invested in it the right way. You want to throw money and throw bullshit around and say, oh, it just changed. Oh, the black or Latino communities just suck because they don't understand. It's not because they don't understand, because guess what? None of us knew anything we know today about freedom from birth. Somebody had to tell us at one point in time, some way or another, this is for you. That's why the three of us are sitting on this panel and we get pissed off when anti-gun people say things about our rights. But we are not getting pissed off enough when gun people won't call each other out on their bullshit and start investing in communities and start getting out helping people. But we want to complain when the anti-gunners have so much support. But guess what? They're in the communities every freaking day. They're there every day. They're constantly feeding it. So, yes, out of the 13% of blacks, they got 10% of them because they're in their ears every freaking day. And we don't do it. We just want to shoot our guns, go to the range, let off some steam, say gun rock, guns are cool. Yeah, I can train this. I got more armor than you do. I got more guns than you do. I rebuild my own ammo. I do all this cool shit, but I don't give a damn about the people that don't agree with me, but I won't go talk to them and entertain them and help them change their lives so they can understand what I'm fighting for. That's the bullshit. That's why we'll lose. And that's why all this, this, this NRA, NSSF, GOA, all that means nothing if we are not back out investing in the people. So when we get done with politics, I hope we get invested in the most important capital that there is, the human capital. And until we do that, it's a losing fight. We might as well shut the fuck up. Yeah, well, so, you know, I mean, if you notice, I didn't jump in there because I think you... You know, you were going, man. So I didn't I didn't want to get in, in front of what you were trying to say, you know. And the thing is, is that do you think that that's just like where we, we you know, this part of the conversation we're talking about 
uh, when we when we say you know the minority communities or however we want to put it, do you think it's just them that we're leaving behind? You no, think it's, we're ju it's, ju it's just those guys because there's poor people and uh, there's people that are they're they're lacking lacking a lot of things all over America. I, I don't think that poverty just goes just to like black communities or Latino communities. But you know where here's the harsh truth. Whenever we say minority communities, that automatically includes poor whites too. Automatically. Because when you get done with race, then you start dealing with socialism, right? You start dealing with all that crap. So money is a motivator and money does separate people. So poor whites, rich blacks, when we're talking about this, are the same. They're the yeah. same. They're one of the well, same. Yeah, I mean, the reason and the reason why I'm asking you that is because a lot of what's happening or what's been happening for a long time in America is giving things or giving privilege or whatever it is you want to call it to, to people maybe who are very wealthy. But everyone else is suffering because if you you know, if you make it very difficult for someone to 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 get a CCW, mm -hmm. right? If you make it very difficult for someone to be able to own a suppressor or do this thing or do that thing, you know, then you're that's that's blocking them in that way. Do you I understand agree. what I'm saying? So, um, you know, what do you think? What do you think about all this, Joe? I didn't want to leave you out of the conversation. No, sure. So, you know, I. So it, 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 it's been it's been it's been a while for a few of these things. Um, when I back back a while ago, when I was a firefighter and EMT um, as a new guy, I, I spent a lot of time in some of the less desirable stations and locations, um, you know, and, and, and when you're talking about people in depressed communities, um, there are those people that are out there that are in their ear constantly. And, and we see it up here, uh, in Chicago, there's, uh, that, uh, that, that, that fake Catholic, uh, guy as, as, as I want to call him a uh, flattery Flahey. something, he, he's a priest up in Chicago and he gets out there. And he'll be the quote unquote only white face in, in, in a sea of people in the middle of some of these communities talking about how racist uh, the white, white man is and how they want their guns to kill him. Um, so when you're talking about community outreach and th th this is talking exactly to what uh, Kevin was talking about, y you've got, you know, this one, uh, you know, white preacher out there, priest talking about how. White people only own, own guns because they hate you and they're racist. Uh, that's why we need to ban guns. And this guy is out there dr beating those drums night and day. Mm -hmm. um, and no so, one's, no yeah, one's the, telling them that guns the equal is going there all the time. Right. Um, so, yeah, absolutely. There, 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 there should be some outreach to realize, hey, you know, it. you need to be able to defend yourself. You should be able to defend yourself. And. You know, the enemy isn't the people who want you to defend yourself. It's the other way around. Um, and, and obviously, there's a lot more things that spiral into that. But if predominantly, it seems like from, you know, when you're talking about like lower, you know, I'll speak to something I, you know, I kind of know more about is the lower class uh, on, on the white spectrum of things, you know, that regardless of their economic status, they still generally speaking are in favor of firearms. Um, for the most part, you know, obviously it depends on where they're at, but you know, when you're talking about, you know, let's say rural West Virginia, let's say, mm -hmm. um, you know, these are folks that, you know, are still, you know, pro second amendment, you know, even if they can, you know, only afford, you know, a double barrel shotgun, they're still generally speaking pro second amendment. So in as far as a firearms outreach side, that doesn't necessarily need to go in that angle. Um, you know, be, beyond I, think, that. I think everyone. I think everyone's suffering. Look, I um I was communicating with uh, Reed Henricks while we were doing all this, mm -hmm. and I asked him if he had anything to say about the uh, reciprocity bill and and you know what's going on here in the news. And he says it's called the Second Amendment. Why do we need legislation that already had um acknowledge acknowledgement in our fund founding documents? You know, so in other words, he's saying, like, if we already have the Second Amendment, why do we need to do all these things when we're supposed to have it? And, and you know, there's lots of people saying that same thing. One of the things about mixing these two things, right, th this is the kind of debate. Like, some people say that even the reciprocity bill shouldn't be out there, right? 
Now, and as, as we said before, you know, we think the reciprocity on its own is a better thing than putting the next fix in there. The thing about putting in all these things that makes it more difficult to do anything. The thing that we're talking about when you're talking about like, why do we, why do we get the first uh, gun laws in the country, right? To stop who from getting guns. Exactly. Right? You know, when you start putting things in people's way, that's automatically attacking people ec economically and depriving people of things. And maybe in the beginning of that, people were thinking, oh, we're just going to, you know, these freed slaves, we're going to block them from getting guns. Today, it blocks everyone. If you, can, if you cannot afford these things, it's blocking you, right? If you can't afford to do the paperwork to get suppressors, it's blocking you. If you can't afford to do the paperwork to get an SBR, it's blocking you. Okay. If you can't afford to get a lawyer to figure out why you're somehow getting rejected or you're getting delayed and all these kinds of things are happening to you when you try to go buy a gun and then maybe there's something in there that's unfair, the system is crazy. There's people who are senators and stuff like that and they're on the uh, do not fly list, right? On the no fly list. And, and so, th but those guys have money and they have things that they can do about that and and uh, try to combat that, and I don't think it works in every case, but if you definitely don't have it, then it's blocking you. If you don't know that you have a right, like when I was in this meeting with these guys, there, there was someone in there that was saying, I didn't even know I could do this. I didn't know I could legally go and, and, and like get a CCW, mm -hmm. and I could legally do that, right? If you don't know it, it's blocking you. And then, right. And even if you know about it and you're like, man, you know, I've got to jump through all these hoops, it's blocking you. And so all of America should get behind what we're doing, not just black people, not just Latinos, not just women. You know, every freaking person should get behind it. You know, if you're gay, whatever it is about you that you think sets you apart or somehow brings you down or, or makes life tougher for you, we should all get behind it because these things are getting in all our ways. It does like right now, I, I, what's really weird for me in this America that we're living in is on one hand, people really hate Trump and they think Trump is somehow gonna bring back slavery, but then they're trying to ban guns. If you really think that this guy is gonna bring back slavery, are you just planning on surrendering to that? I, I don't believe that's gonna happen. I think it's bullshit. OK, but what I'm saying to you, these things kind of like don't mesh these thoughts, these ideas don't mesh with e with each other. And it's not just, uh, you know, like I the, the reason why I let Kevin go there is because I think he, you know, he's coming from a point of passion. He's absolutely right. But there's not enough. It's, just, it's like when people blame black people because Obama got elected, there's not enough black people in America to elect Obama. So even if all of them went out and voted, which they didn't. That's not enough to, to get him elected. So when all these things happen, it's not just from, from black people or if you want to say it's like poor, impoverished people. We're all in this thing together and we're all going to go down together. Everyone's going to suffer from this, even incredibly wealthy people. When we eventually get into socialism and communism and they decide to come take your shit, that's affecting everyone that has shit. Yeah. And th there is always somebody on that spectrum that is going to have less than you that's going to look at you as the rich person. I mean, we, we, we saw the meme that's going around of that girl dressed all in black with those uh, like knee high uh, boots. And she's holding that sign uh, when all the, you know, when, uh, when I can't afford ramen, I'll eat the rich. And, you know, they, they put out how much her outfit costs. She's like wearing a thousand dollars worth of crap. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and she's saying she can't afford ramen. So, you know, it's, it, it's playing into some people's, you know, it's funny how they say people who have money are greedy, but it's always the people who don't have the money who are trying to have the government steal the money for them that are really the greedy people. And and I've, I've been on every scale. But what, but what happens? I mean, let's say, let's say, yeah. and I felt the same way all the time. I mean, you know, you, you live with what you have, and if you want more, you work harder, you, you you get yourself noticed, and you climb up the ladder, and you do better, and 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 that's how it's been for me. Um, but I, I, I've never understood the thing of wanting, you know, somebody with a government gun to go stick a, you know, a cop to go stick their gun in somebody else's face and say, hey, you know, give me your shit, because, you know, I, I don't have enough, and I'm not willing to work hard enough to go get it. Yeah, you know... 
I think um, that one of the things I think about this is, and I tell people like, you know, guns are a gateway drug to freedom. And I mm -hmm. think people need to understand like legally, I, you know, and I see people saying it where people might think we're ignoring them. First of all, there's like a lot of passion flowing around, you know, but, and we're not ignoring you. I'm, we're, we're all of us, including Kevin, uh, Joe, myself, we're looking, Lola's here looking at the comments that everyone's making, you know, um, I, I think we're all in danger here. Every single one of us is in danger. This is this is really like what's going on. No, no matter how you want to look at this thing, we're all in danger. There's no way if people really if they really start doing what what some folks think out there is going to happen. What happens when you take all the money from the rich guys? When the rich guys are out of their money. Right. So let's say you go, OK, let, let's take let's take the money from the rich guy. I'm not a rich guy, so I don't care. I'm going to take the money from the guy who has the money. OK, when when you took all his money, now what? Like you just said, Joe, then it then it then it goes down, because if you say take all the money from the billionaires, when the billionaires are tapped out, then you go to the millionaires. When you take it from the millionaires then you start going to the people who are what do you call a hundred thousand air? Yeah. <laughs> you know, when you get all those guys, you got to drop down to the people that are like ten thousand air. You know, then pretty soon we're all going to be sitting around just looking at each other like, what the fuck happened? Yeah. You yeah, know? yeah. Because if you're alive, if you're in this world, if you're alive, if you start on the bottom, the one thing about America that separates it, I think, from everywhere else it, is that if you start on the bottom in America, you could go to the top. Yeah. And if you start at the top, you could go to the bottom. You can start at the top, go to the bottom, come back. You could go up and down as long as you have breath and you're able to fight and keep changing. But we're all in the same boat. And if we if we take it down, we all go down. And when you take away people's gun rights, when you take away their ability to defend themselves, you might do it. Let's say you, you're gay and you're like, you know what? I don't need these gun guys to have guns. I'm a gay man. I don't need these dudes out there with guns or whatever. You think you don't need to defend yourself and you take it away. Then tomorrow, someone that does have guns and power decides to take you out and you have nothing to defend yourself. And if I go, oh, that's OK, because I'm not a gay dude. Then the next day, that person will come after me because there's something about me that they decide they don't like. You know, Absolutely. You know, we had happened here to, on that point and it, it kind of I don't I didn't want to know names because I didn't want to get mad at any one particular person. Uh, but I was recently approached about four months ago, I was having an interview. I just haven't put out yet uh, with a member of a, she's a lesbian. OK, so we were having a we were having a talk about, you know, diversity and guns and freedom and a whole nine yards. We haven't talked about everything. And she told me she was like, well, you know, I, I would like to shoot guns more, but I don't want to make you upset. I was like, that's that's not going to make me upset. Like, what do you mean? It's like, well, we had a couple of people instructors that they the pink pistols out of i think it started out of california the organization mm -hmm. pink pistols um okay. they uh reached out to some local instructors here in st louis and had these guys all lined up to uh to you know train and things like that and apparently once they they had a meeting or two there was too much of it for them they didn't stand on their grounds and help the people out because they were different than them. So they they pulled and now Pink Pistols had no instructors in the area that will help them. After they start calling back again, apparently nobody would jump up and help them. So I volunteered to help out as soon as they're ready. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't understand. Yeah, that's so crazy. Why would it be too much? I mean, I, I don't know. I don't like yeah. I said. I didn't. I was like I started to say what ranges. No, don't tell me. <laughs> like I didn't even want to know. You know, like mm -hmm. don't tell me. It's none of my business. I don't care. I don't want to know. Don't tell me. Just tell me the story. So she repeated it again. And it's like, yeah, well, they're having a problem having guys. This is what she's saying. OK, I didn't talk to Pink Pistols. This is what one of their members is telling me that um, they they stepped back from it. Like it was just, you know, I guess it was too much diversity in the room for them, too much sexual diversity or whatever. So they decided not to uh, not to support it. But we can't have crap like that either. No, I don't understand that. I mean, you know. And and also, I mean, I think if it if it comes down to that, that maybe so there's some people that didn't feel comfortable teaching those guys. Uh, I don't I don't really understand why they, they would feel uncomfortable teaching them. But, you know, at the same time, there has to, you know, somehow they've got to become instructors themselves. Right. Right. You know, that's really the thing about it. You've got to become the instructor because there's nothing wrong with people feeling comfortable by people who look like them instructing them. At the same time, you know, we kind of have to get over whatever craziness it is. Like, are you there to date someone or are you there to get people involved with guns? I think guns are a gateway to freedom.
You know, I really, I really, really believe that. If people realize, like, when I talk to young kids in the, in the gun store and, um, you know, they, they want to get into guns and, and they want to be able to conceal carry and stuff, I tell them, okay, well, there's laws in America. I wish there was less laws in America, but there's laws. If, you're, if you stay out of trouble, you will have the right to do this and you can do a lot of things. And I think when they start realizing that, you know, it, a lot of things grow out of that. A lot of things grow out of that. And, I, and I'll tell you a story about, like, we're here in the Big Daddy Gun Studio, right? And the reason why we're in the Big Daddy Gun Studio is because five years ago, the owners of Big Daddy Guns, they, you know, there was all this, like, gun control stuff going on. And they weren't, they, you know, they didn't have any problem with guns. They didn't have any. But there was a lot of gun control talk going on. And they were like, what are these people talking about gun control? So they went and they looked it up. And then what they discovered is that there's something called the Second Amendment. And they were like, wait a second, you're, tell you're trying to tell me that I have the right to actually own guns and do this stuff? And so they went out there and they started buying guns. And when they bought guns, they bought more guns. And the next thing you know, they were like, oh, well, we've got so many guns, maybe we should open a gun store. You know, and that kept growing and it grew, it grew into what you see today. They wound up getting involved in the Republican Party and, and lots of different things, you know, to like, they, they got so, they fell so much in love with their gun rights, with the Second Amendment, that it just kept getting deeper and deeper for them. I'm not saying that's going to happen to everyone out there, but I think most people are like that. If for whatever reason, if you don't, if they, if you don't want to be like us, but you think you need a gun or a few guns, and you need some training and things like that. By the time you get to the second gun and the second gun, the second training class and all that kind of stuff, you now have a right that you discovered is yours. And in the world, it should belong to everyone. It should belong to you by birth. It, you, you shouldn't have to have the Second Amendment. Okay? But you'll discover that you're in America and it happens to be one of the last places on the earth that you have something like the Second Amendment. And once you realize that you have that and how precious it is, how likely is it that you're going to go, yeah, more gun control, I think. That's right. less and less likely, right? Yep. That's you all know, have to so, more people. Yeah, I think, I think we just have to keep informing people. But, I, you know, and I'm not trying to negate your point that, that we have to outreach to people because you're absolutely right. We have to try to bring everyone into the fold just because of the way things work. What's happening is that they don't understand that they have this right. But the thing about knowledge is that the world that we live in today, knowledge is not unique just to someone who's wealthy. Knowledge is not unique to someone just because of the color of their skin. If that were true, Joe would be the only one that knows about the second amendment that's on this <laughs> panel right now. Right. Right. But it's not. It's not. It's available for all of us. And the beauty of the world today, it's been it's not just the Internet. The Internet makes it a lot easier. But, you know, it's since the printing press. For a long time in the world, for a long time in the world, it's been easy. Knowledge is out there. And it's easy for you to get it. And I think the big thing that people need to do, like their like people's responsibility on their behalf is. You know, like I feel this way when I hear a lot of people, you know, even in the in the event that we had, there were people like, oh, I didn't know I had this right. And I feel bad that they didn't know they had this right. And, and, and um, you know, Shanine Allen, I, both of you guys know who Shanine Allen is, right? Yep. Joe, do you know who that is? The woman in, in Philadelphia that had a CCW and she went into New Jersey. She didn't realize what the law was and she got arrested. She had a concealed um. carry not not off the top of my head yeah she wound up she wound up having to get pardoned by uh chris christie yeah so she did get pardoned right yeah she did yeah okay. we i think we all gun guys every gun guy knew about this but the point i'm trying to make about this particular thing is she said she didn't know and uh, and this happened a few years ago right kevin yeah they even um yeah, it happened a few years ago they even used her today uh in uh in the in the, the the voting process they brought her up yeah yeah, exactly. Yeah, they did. So here's the thing. I'm not trying to come down on her because I understand why she didn't know. I'm not trying to come down on those people who say, man, I didn't know that you could do this and you could do all these things. What I'm trying to say to you is regardless of what your financial, your economic situation is, you're living in America. 
You're living in, I mean, I'm saying people in Africa have cell phones and get on the internet. Okay? People mm -hmm. in third world countries can do that. You're in America. It's your responsibility to ask the question. Because there's books, there's the internet, you could go to the library, you could borrow someone else's phone if you don't have one. But if you're going to get on your phone and, and, and watch like a big booty hip hop video. <laughs> right. You know, that and is. you're not going to, I do it. I do it. I do it a lot. <laughs> Did you just say that you do it, Joe? I was talking about cat videos. Oh, cat videos. Oh, cat okay. Videos. No, I mean, if you, if, you, if you have access to these things and whatever you take with your day and you don't do it, you know, if, you, if you're going to go spend like, what is a pair of Air Jordans? Like two, oh, three hundred dollars? Very expensive, yeah. Yeah, if you're going to go, if you're going to have a pair of Air Jordans or some other expensive designer clothing, but you're not going to spend some money towards your own rights to like getting a CCW or taking a, a, a gun class, a, a training class or something like that, firearms training class, then you cannot say that what's happening to you is 100% on someone else. I think, yes, we should try to help each other. We should try to bring each other along. That's how we make a better world. But, you know, it's that thing of trying to save someone who's drowning. And when you swim out there, they make you drown too. That person has to also be interested in, in being saved. That's why you have to, that's why you go into fights knowing you're not going to save everybody. And, you know, a big part of what we, we, what I teach in my event is accountability. Look, man, once you're, once you're, once you're armed with the information, you're an adult. You got to make a decision, you know, and mm -hmm. whatever decision you make is what you make. But once you once you've been informed, the excuses are out the window, then it's up to you to be accountable. And that's one yeah. thing that our community, gun community rights, one thing we preach. You're accountable for your actions. That's why you are using this great tool and the great freedom you have, because we understand we're responsible and we're accountable. So yeah. if you can't do the same thing, then. Yeah, um, I mean, it, go it goes to the question that you're saying. Sometimes, you know, I read the comment from Reed. When I'm hanging out with him, Reed is like, you know, I don't understand you guys. You got to have like the latest gear, the most expensive designer, blah, 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 and the most expensive gun, just like you just said, but you don't get training. But this is all of us. That's what I'm trying to say to you guys that, you know, it's all of us that do this in our own way. Like you don't get training. You don't support someone like Kevin Dixie with aiming for the truth. You don't support, you know, black guns matter. You don't support. I don't you, you know, it, you don't have to support a black thing as far as I'm concerned. But you don't support something in you, wherever you are that helps kids get into guns or understand their rights or you don't you don't support something that helps maintain this thing. That's fine. You could do whatever you want to do. But later on, you know, when you when someone comes to get all that fancy shit from you. You yeah. know, and you think that somehow you're going to be able to defend everything by yourself. You're going to be able to fight for that by yourself. The fight doesn't start that day when they put a law into effect and they say, yeah, we're going to go get all the guns back. That's the worst day. That's the day when we all go to war and like hell comes to earth. You know, what you have to do is actually fight for it right now and spend some of your time. You know, it was tough. Like Lola was, you know, Lola and I have been running around doing all kinds of craziness, man all over the country and going out to Atlanta, she was like, man, you know, we, we should be spending time with the kids and all this kind of stuff. And I was like, no, we, we have to go out there. Right. You know, you have to make it, you, you have to know that you try to do something and you just didn't sit back and wait for someone else to come along and save you. I'll tell you, like, I don't believe like the NRA is going to come along. And I don't believe any organization is going to come along and save me. I don't believe any president or any politician or anyone you know, you have to try to save yourself. You have to go out there and try to do something, you know? I agree. Yeah. Um, Joe, I'm James Yeager too, by the way. Yeah, Same. I know. Okay. People want to talk about that. Okay, Joe, I'm going to go to you because we're, we're, we're kind of like big mouths. So I just want to make sure <laughs> that, you know, <laughs> that you have an opportunity to say something, get a word in edgewise. Sorry, right, Joe. Do apologize, man. Yeah, that's all right. You go. No, no, it's on you. I'm just I'm apologizing for my past discretions. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. Um, I oh, by the way, before you go, Joe, I did ask Mac if he had anything to say. Mac is out hunting right now and we were trying to get him to come on, um, you know, and but he's out hunting. He doesn't have re really good um, Internet where he's at and he really does want to come on. So I asked him if he had a message <laughs> that he wanted me to share with you guys. And he said, yeah, here's my message. 
screw the NRA and their anti-gun bullshit. Sounds like Mac. So yeah, yeah, that's the message for me. <laughs> go ahead, Joe. Um, where do we go from here? <laughs> uh, where do you think we? Where do you think we should go, Joe? I mean, how do you think that you know? We we we're all passionate and we're all saying stuff here, but yeah. where do we what where do we go from here, Joe? Um, you know, I, I I I think it's important. You know, we need to coalesce as a group, and um, you know, and, and muster all of our forces and put up uh, you know, put put up a put up a good defense, so to speak, and not just good defense, but it but an offense. Um, you know, we need to stop responding to things and start going on the offense more. And I think the the climate is probably better for that now than it has been in quite a while. Um, it, you know, if if we were able to collectively muster enough people to get ahead of um, the vote today that combined those two, maybe maybe it wouldn't have happened. I don't know. Um, you know, theoretically, Republicans are pro gun allegedly, um, but you know, here we are. Um, and that's if we look back at you know all these things and. You know, not to harp on the political spectrum, but, you know, the 86 gun ban was a Republican ban. You, most of these bans that we're actually currently living under were passed by Repu all the bans actually were currently yeah. living under pretty much were passed by Republicans. The only one. Yeah. That were, I, I think the Republicans. Yeah, I think it's not just I think it's not just the NRA not listening to us. I think the Republican Party isn't listening. I don't think they care what we say. Um, Tyvin show just the Tyvin show just gave us 10 bucks again. He says, I support this podcast and the right to be a free person in America. Don't tread on me. <laughs> there you go. Amen, Tyvin. I totally Amen. agree with you. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's it's a it's a thing, man. I think you're right. You know, I, but I think we were trying to push back against these things being joined. I think we all knew it was going to be joined. People were out there saying, like, hey, this is going to be joined. Let people know we don't want these things to be joined. What if they're both valid, they should be able to stand on their own. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And and you know, we we look at the fix nicks and all the people who were in favor of that. I mean, you had the Feinsteins and those that entire crowd in favor of the fix nicks. So you know, it's yeah, that's you know, it, it's thing. their poison pill to kill the na the national reciprocity, in my opinion. Or maybe they do get their wish and they and they get to further the uh, the uh, de facto uh, national registry. So, uh, yes, yeah. I am from Indiana. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. By the way, so I know there's lots of people wanting us to talk about Jaeger. So James Jaeger, um, I guess his channel was deleted by YouTube. Um, yeah. I was trying to look for his channel, uh, and it's been uh, deleted. I guess he got uh, multiple strikes against him, I'm going to assume. I don't really follow Jaeger, I have to tell you guys. You guys know I'm not a fan of Jaeger. Um, just based on – Jaeger's the kind of person to me that's been out there trying to – whether you guys see it or not, he, he tries to uh, stifle the voice of people who don't agree with him in, inside of the gun community. So if people don't march to his orders – he goes out there and tries to block those people. I know that because hashtag me too. <laughs> you know, I'm one of those people that he that he did that to. Um, and it's all good, but that's the reason why I don't follow him and I don't support him. Um, in my opinion, what YouTube's doing, they're doing to a lot of people. And it doesn't make me – so even though I, I have obviously that kind of a situation going on there with Jaeger – I don't think that it's a good thing that YouTube is out there doing this, and they're doing it to a lot of people. I think it's just not it's not just Jaeger. They're doing it to lots of folks out there. We we hear about it when it's the bigger guys, but this is where I don't agree with with uh, what's going on because he has a right to speak. He has a right to have his voice and say what he has to say, and um, not be deleted just for that. So, wh wh where do you guys come down on that, Joe? I'll let you go first. Sure. So um, I, I can't speak to his latest deletion, but there has been a, a trend in YouTube of of taking previous videos, hitting them with strikes and building that up against a channel videos that have been out for two, three, four, five, six years. And then and, and, and using that as a way to shut down channels. Now, um, I've I've had I haven't had any actual official strikes. I have I had a lot of demonetization on a lot of my videos or not suitable for advertisers. Um, it actually seems like recently this has helping 
uh, that some of the new changes have helped at least as far as faster uh, appeals process or my latest video just went live the other day, didn't even get uh, hit for demonetization, which was surprising. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think YouTube, uh, which is owned by Google, is playing that line of they want the money from the videos uh, because YouTube is still not really a very uh, pro cash flow uh, setup right now. Uh, the, the way the way they've had issues with their uh, um, with everybody uh, their their advertisers um, oh, okay. they, 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 they've had issues with that so they want the money from those videos uh, but at the same time they're not a fan of the gun channel so they're playing that fine line and for a lot of us and I'm sure you've ex you know you guys have experienced it too right they'll kill the monetization for your video but they'll still roll ads. Be a pre roll yeah, well, that happens, yeah, that happens to us. You're just yeah. not getting a penny for them. Right, um, exactly. And, and right now, at least, I'm very thankful I still have a day job um, because I would be in a world of hurt otherwise. Um, and, I, and I know a lot of folks have that, you know, have a lot of subscribers and they're in trouble with that. So I think it's YouTube doing what YouTube does. And until we have a viable alternative, there's, there's nowhere we can really turn to, especially for... Uh, you know, m for most channels out there, there's nowhere for us to go. You know, VidMe just, uh, I just got a notice from them. I guess, I guess they're out now. Um, that never went anywhere for me. I put some stuff up on there anyway, but there really aren't a lot of alternatives. That's why I've got the website and I put up articles and stuff there. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, people yeah, prefer yeah. to see the videos and see it working. Yeah, Little yeah, Lion is that James had two strikes, strikes that would come off in January. January. He was deleted, deleted over, over a live podcast. podcast. Okay, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm hearing feedback. Okay, there you go. Yeah. Hmm. So, um, yeah, you know, and then someone else says, um, you know, David Walters, I believe, says, yeah, and Trump is going to make it worse by getting rid of net neutrality. So I think folks are talking about how, you know, it's big corporations. Um, I don't think it's going to necessarily be worse when net neutrality goes away. I think one of the problems here, even with YouTube, is there's no competition, like Joe just said. There's really no competition. This is stifling of free speech. You can demonetize people's videos if you want to, you know, get all politically correct about it. But when you delete someone for have it, for for voicing their opinion, this is America. You you know, along with the second the Second Amendment, you have the First Amendment to say what you think. We don't necessarily have to like you, but when you go to the extent of deleting a channel, you know, and then you can say, yeah, well, they own the channels. They could do what they want to do. I think a lot of this. If, if we weren't having these other battles in Congress right now, we would have people looking at, uh, at entities like YouTube and Facebook to see whether or not they're utilities. Because in my mind, they're very close to that. We're gun guys and, and based on what we believe, we don't need the government to come in and make another law and say this place is a utility, but they're getting close to that. You know, they're utilities that allow people the, the right to, to speak you know, to voice their opinions. And right now, it goes back to what I was saying before. They can use it against us because we're gun guys and they don't like us. But, but in some, at some point in the future, they're going to use it against other people who they don't like what they're saying. Yeah, abs absolutely. And, and they have been. Uh, there's a number of, some, somebody posted up here about Louder with Crowder. Um, they're, you know, they, they've, been, they've been censoring a number of, well, censoring a number of different things and some of this is de facto and for people who are out there watching who don't understand if you get hit with not suitable for all advertisers depending on exactly how they hit you and it's happened and it's happened with me is that like a lot of people watch my videos uh you know let's say you have a family tablet that sits in the living room right and you have that uh, tablet uh for your kids so you go pick up the tablet when you sit down in the living room rather than pull out your phone or go get in your tablet you pull it up and you go to search for whatever gun thing it is well, it's your family tablet in the living room. You have it on restricted mode so that your five or six or seven year old can't pick it up and find some horrible content on YouTube or whatever it is that's not appropriate to their age. Well, our videos aren't going to come up when they when they get nailed for uh, not suitable for all advertisers because it moves it into that semi restricted category. And if you're not logged into the proper account, it isn't even going to show up in the feeds. It's not going to be a suggested video. And we see those, at least I do anyway, I see those things happen. I've had people say that, said, hey, you know, I grabbed the tablet that was sitting in the living room. That's how I, one of the things that cl cleared me, cued me off to it, said I couldn't find, you know, hardly anything uh, for your channel. They found like five videos. Um, this was one of the full, you know, that full big changeover. Remember they said, oh, we're going to fix everything. And the next morning you woke up and, you know, 50 videos were mm -hmm. 
we're tagged immediately yellow. Um, so that's another way that they can silence us, uh, even if they're not fully deleting it. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, Kevin, I don't want to leave you out. No, that's fine. Um, I think that the biggest thing is, and yeah, uh, I consider James a buddy of mine. Um, I know he's got a very strong opinions about things and he's he's very boisterous with that. Um, at the same time, I think the guy's done a lot of good. I know he's done a lot of good for me personally. Uh, he's helped out a lot of people and when, and but even if he didn't do that, even if he was a, a jerk amongst all jerks, never helped anybody, you know, said the world should be on fire. People have a right to voice their opinion. And I think that once you get to the point to where you're you're saying, okay, this guy is saying things that we don't like, because that's all it boils down to. He's saying things we don't like, so we're going to shut him down. I think this, the the short end of it is exactly what you said, Hank. Okay, so today you're 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 picking on gun guys and you're shutting them out. Well, I don't know what people know, but you video games are like one of the biggest things on YouTube. But guess what? People blame for violence outside of guns. <laughs> they blame influence of music and video games. So are you next, right? So after we successfully can start shutting down these gun guys and they don't bark back, nobody makes a big fuss, who do we go after next? And then it, it becomes whoever doesn't agree with us being Google or whomever, whoever doesn't agree with us, we're going to shut them out. And I don't think that that's the way the world should work. I think it's it's a cowardly act by uh, YouTube and Google to shut anybody out. You know, if you're not making... I mean, I can almost understand. I'm going to take it to a big extreme here. If you were putting out legitimate porn videos on YouTube, okay, that's that's not okay. If you are, you know, showing yourself murdering animals on YouTube, that might not be okay. Yeah, but, but you know, but one of the things, one of the things that happens, sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off, but you know, you're talking about porn. YouTube has this thing called YouTube Kids, right? And the reason why, what's everything, everything here that's happening, the root of it is money. And YouTube has this thing called YouTube Kids. And what happened recently is that that's supposed to be the safe space, right? The safe zone for kids to go to. So what people were doing were gaming the system. So they were making videos that, that appealed to kids. They had kids' titles, thumbnails that look like kids' uh, characters that kids are into, okay? And then if you look at those videos, it was very adult content. There were things going on, and I'm not saying like a, adult, like porn content going on in there, but very close to it, and in some cases, incredibly so, incredibly close to it. So it was, it was very disturbing, and someone discovered that kids were watching this on a thing because people are gaming the system. So what happened was there were a ton of uh, companies that actually pulled out of YouTube again. This is what happened before, right? And a, a ton more companies just recently pulled out. And so what YouTube is trying to do every time they crack down on people, they're trying to prove to these companies that they're a safe place to come back to. Oh, you know? I don't know about the kid thing. Okay. Yeah. So um, let me and let me just read this real quick. David Hines, he doesn't agree with us. He says, don't agree. YouTube isn't public property. This is a cultural problem, not a legal problem, except maybe ads running on demonetized channels. You know, yes, YouTube is a is a privately owned entity, and it seems like they can do whatever they want to do. Absolutely, I agree with that. I think ultimately, in the end, what we should all do is build our own thing somewhere. But it's very difficult to do that because we all have to get together. In this conversation that we're having, you know, we I think we realize that we don't all work together, even as a gun community. You know, or even as let's say we go outside of the gun community, a bigger scope. Let's say you look at all the people who are making videos that are getting demonetized and banned and attacked on YouTube and the channels are getting shut down because it's not just gun guys. It's lots of other people out there that are going through this problem. If you know, we, we have to somehow be able to get together and go off somewhere and do our own thing. And if we cannot do that, we're living in a world where this is what it is. The Internet's not going away. This is where people are getting their information. That's why we've been doing a two hour show, you know, Monday to Friday, because this is how people are getting their information. They don't want to get it from the news anymore. They, you know, they just don't want to consume that material. So they have to consume it somewhere. And so either like, you know, if you don't believe that we should make these these entities utilities, then somehow we have to be able to work together and go off on our own and build something. It's not going to kill off YouTube, but maybe on our own in our own place you know, people, we can create a, a big enough magnet that people are going to come there and consume the content that we create, if that's what we do. And then people can advertise on there. And so there's a fair exchange because I don't think that people really believe in socialism so much that they think that we should be out there creating this content for them. 
a hundred percent like it's just at our own expense you know that we that we don't make anything out of it that we're not somehow supported for what we're doing because there's a cost to it you know so how do how do we balance those things out um joe you want to take it <laughs> so I mean, generally speaking, coming into net neutrality, and I wrote a couple articles about it a few years ago. Um, one of them, we were talking about Mac. One of them was for uh, uh, the Bang Switch, if you remember uh, that blog that was mm -hmm. up. Um, I wrote some articles on why I was against net neutrality several years ago, uh, a few years ago. And uh, generally speaking, I'm still against net neutrality uh, now. I'm, I'd be happy if it if it goes away. Um, I. I tried. I tend to fall on the free market side solution for virtually everything, uh, wherever it's practical, and even if it's just a small segment, I would much rather see the free market take care of it than the government, because the government pretty much screws everything up. Yeah, I mean, a net neutrality just for people. I think it's a very tough, tough thing that people aren't wrapping their heads around. Basically, it's just setting up a system for the big guys to kick everyone's ass. Yeah, yeah. I mean, net. It, it's like it's like anything else. You know, these bills are named. If you look at the name, basically, it's the exact opposite of what the name is. Net neutrality isn't net neutrality. It's it's forcing everyone in the same box and making everyone uh, play at the exact same level, rather than letting it, it. It it hurts competition. It stifles startups. And it's much easier for the big guys to uh, to go along with, and that's one of the reasons why it passed. I mean, when you see a company like Comcast, all right, I, I, really, do we even need to say anything else? Com Comcast supported behind the scenes net neutrality all the way up the line. Yeah, so did Google. By the way, we're talking about Google and YouTube. They 100% support this bullshit. Yeah, exactly. So when you look at a company like Comcast that supports something, there is no way in hell anyone else should support it if Comcast supports it. Um, and, and, and I mean, well, David, was, David Walter says, no, it allows us all to access the internet. Getting rid of net neutrality is what hurts competition. What the so, fuck has net neutrality done to allow everyone to access the internet? We've had that and it hasn't done anything. Out, yeah. they, they, they haven't built lines out to, you know, out into the country and all that kind of stuff that they said they were going to do because right. they created this thing. They gave the money to the big companies. The big companies said, fuck you very much. It's yeah, not it, it's not a good thing like you think it is. It, exactly. So Hank Hank has to be in the Big Daddy Gun studio right now because he lives in the middle of nowhere and he got screwed. Yep. I live in the middle of nowhere and finally I can have a podcast where you guys can see me thanks to some technology coming through that's not landline based. Um, so I can actually have decent internet, thank God, for the first time in the three years I've been out here. What you know, so net neutrality, for those of you who don't know is what three years old barely roughly it's about three years old yeah all right like a couple so of years. the internet was perfectly fine before net neutrality perfectly fine nothing nothing bad was yeah. happening they passed yeah. net neutrality we've had zero advance in the past three years basically since net neutrality passed yeah because you know you know what happened like i i have at t right out where we live and we have mm -hmm. dsl and it's horrible yeah. And so I tried, I actually tried, I called, we called them up and we're like, listen, can we even get like another line or something like two lines? You know what they said? They said, we're not giving you another line. We, we want to take away the line you have. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. That's what yeah. they told me. And they said, you know what? If you like, let's say you go on a vacation and you suspend this line or something like that, we we'll will never put it back on. That's, that's what net neutrality has gotten you. These companies are sitting easy right now. Not You're worried. You're a hundred percent right, and I am living it right now at this moment. What's happened is Frontier, um, Frontier bought. So Frontier and Verizon had this huge scam going, and when net neutrality happened, it hit me right here just as I moved into this place. And what happened was Frontier has acquired all this uh, landline technology and infrastructure from Verizon. Um, and what they've done with it is they've taken the very uh, rural centers and use that to make money. And everybody out here who's rural like myself, and I live in the middle of freaking nowhere, um, it, close enough to town, but still for all intents and purposes, in the middle of nowhere, I'm 500 feet off the road. Um, <laughs> they won't do anything out here. I mean, they're, they have totally abandoned 
Yeah. Now David they Walters is still like millions of customers because they don't have to. Yeah, he's they still going. We're going to we're going to let him have his voice here. He says, "No, the internet has always been neutral. You were confused. It was set up originally in the 90s with net neutrality. The FCC stepped in when AT&T, GE, Viacom tried to get rid of it." Um, yeah. You know what? I I think that look, it's a word. It's like fix the Knicks. <laughs> It's a word that these companies are using and they're abusing it. And it's not, it has not worked. Um, okay. And then also now Snooch has given us a hundred bucks. Oh, check that out. Yeah. Okay. And uh, there's no comment that he's given us a hundred bucks. So thank you for that. Um, so um, David Hines says the internet wasn't broken in 2015 before these rules. Um, net neutrality equals bandwidth socialism. It's like outlawing Amazon two day shipping. So, I mean, I think it's, I don't know, we can argue about this, right, Joe? I think that people don't yeah. really know. A lot of people just like, oh, net neutrality must be a good thing. It's like the UN, it's for everybody. The UN is the worst fucking thing right. ever invented, so, in my opinion. It so needs we, to go we away. To know what the world was like before net neutrality, we don't have to look back in a time machine. I mean, pretty much all of us were alive three years ago, right? Right. We, all we have to do is go back yeah. in the memory bank three years ago and say, hey, the internet was doing perfectly fine without it. There was no, the sky wasn't falling. Nobody was getting screwed over. Um, so, I, and, and I don't want to get bogged down on net neutrality, um, but, you know, with you guys, but it's, it was fine three years ago. If we get rid of it now, things are still going to be fine. Yeah, it, was go it was going in a good direction. They were going to build out things. They were going to get yeah. the internet out to everyone. But mm -hmm. then all these things came in and they got funding and everything. And the way it happened, they were like, fuck it. We don't have to do shit. Yeah. We can just exactly. pull back. Yeah. You know, and so Those I think you rural that are living it right now. And then I've got to use this 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 crazy internet setup that I've got now to be able to talk to you right now. I up until a couple months ago, I had to draw every video you guys saw. I had to drive to the freaking public library or a Starbucks and upload it from there to the internet because I couldn't even wow. upload the videos that I did from my house. Yeah, um, you know, and, and, and you know, and we're living it right now. So for people who say net neutrality is a good thing, no, not at all. Um, but, it, but, but yeah. that's the politicians who are pushing this and certain organizations. Like I said, all you have to do, if Comcast supports it, you know, it's bad. Yeah. It's like healthcare for the internet, dude. And yeah. like, and like anything else that these people do, why, why do you have to have these laws? Simplify it. Just simplify it. It's the same thing with healthcare. You don't have to make a law for companies to get into the business of healthcare. But if you start making laws, companies start hacking the law. Why do you think CVS went and bought out Aetna? And what you guys don't realize is you're going to get really fucked up service now. Mm -hmm. Okay. CVS is getting rid of a lot of people. There's a lot of pharmacists. They're cutting down. They're doing all kinds of things because they're gaming the system. When you make all these laws, you know, come on, guys, people can go out there and lobby. They can lobby the Internet. Go ahead. You can, you can go ahead and show that, Joe. Um, by the way, you know, I noticed you got your tactical walls back there. So shout out to tactical walls. And you got your PS90. I, I I do. So, somebody in the comments said, comments said, "Oh, is that an OD uh, PS90 back there?" Yes, it is. It's uh, with the uh, original uh, factory uh, optic as well. Is this it is, OD or FDE? It looks like FDE to me, but it know. is FDE. Oh, okay. Uh, no, no, no. It's OD. It's OD. It's OD. Oh, okay. Does. I was looking at the screen. I'm like, why does I, it look I'm FDE? Sorry why the light bounces <laughs> off? But yeah, this is this yeah. is all drab green. It's you. It's you. You, oh, Joe, you Joe, are throwing off the white balance. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> my damn privilege. <laughs> the favorite part about that gun is that it's loaded. Yeah, amen. Yes, it, amen. that that is uh, one of the uh, home defense uh, uh, carbines here on uh, here on the hacienda. Damn, you don't want to get tagged up with some five seven. No, so, no. yeah. I mean, to to come back, so to, I don't know. We got we got into the net neutrality <laughs> internet <laughs> thing. You know, because we were talking about like channels being banned and all that kind of stuff. And I think, look, if it's, I think it comes, it's a circular thing to come back to this, but it's what I said to you guys before, you should never wait around for someone to save you, save yourself. You know, don't wait for other people to save you. I think this, I feel the same way about what's happening. If you want this kind of content, if you want, um, you know, pro gun, pro second amendment stuff, if you want the kind of things we do and other people do, what you need to do in your life 
is support that. We need to do it. We need to find alternatives to YouTube. I don't think it's going to disappear and go away, but we need to find alternatives to it because, you know, one way or the other, we are coming to the to the end of the, the railroad track on this. Now, you know, now I'm going to ask both of you guys some questions. So, Hank, you've been you've been you've been strumming along with this for a long time now. And, uh, you know, Joe, you've got more followers than I do. So let me ask you a question. For video for video, going going back through your history of being on there, are you seeing a rise in viewership or a slacking? So is it as effective as it was, say, two years ago? Uh, views and stuff like that, in my opinion, are going down across the board. That's why we're posting videos every day. Gotcha. Okay, that's, that's um, what I think. And, and it's happening to people. It's not just me saying it. YouTube is changing the algorithm to to make to put us in a position where we get less and less views. If every video we make gets automatically demonetized, well, mm -hmm. in that 24 to you know 36 hours, whatever time period it is, probably longer than that in a lot of cases, 70 something hours. That's the that's the best views you're ever going to get. If you lose that, you've lost a big chunk right there. But then after that, there's other things in the algorithm that that um, slows down people actually discovering your video. And discovery is the huge thing because years ago you could put up a video, it does okay, it gets a you know a couple hundred, a couple thousand views, it's all right. And then for some reason next month, boom, it just takes off and everyone's looking at it. And maybe people just discovered this video, mm -hmm. and it starts trending. But in a lot of cases, that's not happening now. And it's not just with me. You can look at some of the huge channels, and because they're fighting all of this stuff, they're getting low views there. And I think uh, you know Joe obviously might have a different opinion, but it's what I see. So, so I wasn't putting out a lot of videos up until this past maybe a year and a half. Um, I would put out like maybe a video a month um, up until maybe two years ago when I finally got the range uh, kind of constructed out here and started and started really diving into this more. Um, I, I am seeing my like like you said, like uh, Hank was saying, the first twenty four to to, to seventy two hours are key in driving some of that momentum. And when they hit that with the demonetization up front, um, that seems to me anyway, at least to, to kill some of the reach. So I am seeing some of my currently at this exact moment, I'm seeing some of my older videos still gaining and keeping a lot of traction and still doing very well. So overall views are are down, but not as bad as they were a few months ago. Um, the new videos that have been coming out have been absolutely devastated. Um, I'm seeing, uh, you know, videos that at least before would see, you know, no matter what video I put up, generally speaking, I would get, a, you know, about a thousand views on it, no matter what it was. Mm -hmm. And now I'm seeing, uh, you know, videos that are either going into the, you know, several thousand, tens of thousands, or they're staying in like that 500 to 800 range, just 800 views total um, that just hit stagnate and don't do anything. And some of them, you know, I don't, you know, one or two, you know, whatever, you know, they're, they're niche type things. Others, I look at, I'm like, how in the hell is this possible? Mm -hmm. And it's whatever algorithm is going on back there that's just absolutely killing them. Yeah. Um, and, Guns and Gear posted something um, from another YouTuber on this, on his social media, on his Facebook. You should take a look at it. I'm trying to remember what video it was. Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and there's something there to look at because it's, it's. It's it's devastating, especially for somebody my size. You know, before all this happened, um, you know, and and of course, obviously, YouTube then changed it up with their notification settings, where you have to go back in and get notifications even if you're subscribed, mm -hmm. um, which you know doesn't help either. So yeah, it's insane. Um, by the way, Snooch that gave us a hundred bucks, he says huh. at, at Lola, um, you know, and Hank. No need to thank me. Thank you and Hank. So that's awesome. So let me ask this because we're about to wrap it up. So what you know, so what I want to do here, uh, Joe, do you have a um, Patreon account? Uh, I do not have a Patreon account. I okay. still haven't done one. A lot of people have asked. Um, what I do have, though, and since you mentioned it, uh, I can pawn my wares, so to speak. I've got a swag shop. So um, if you want to buy a patch, uh, or some custom fight soap. This is some uh, fight soap collaboration, American Spring. Soon there's going to be cool. a business version that's going to drop any day now. I'm just waiting for those to come in, uh, commemorating the crossing of Lexington or uh, crossing the Delaware. This one is commemorating uh, Lexington and Concord. 
Fight Soap's actually really cool. It's really good stuff for your skin. Um, and I've got some neat patches that are uh, right designed for the channel. So if you want to check that out, uh, you can hit the uh, main website, 13c.us, and it'll get you there. And you can click over to the swag shop. Uh, we've got one on Big Cartel, a few things, you know, and if you want to support the channel that way, you can pick up some cool patches and uh, and do that. I, I probably should do a Patreon. I have so many people that keep asking, but... Um, yeah. I know, so not, now, so all these things that um, that you guys have, people can find that on your YouTube channel, right? In the description, uh, yeah, the videos yeah, so, or yeah, on your website. Yeah. Just plug. Go ahead and plug those things. Yeah, you know, so, and I I encourage folks to go out there and support Joe. He's a good guy. You've seen him, you know, come on here. This is not the first time, even. So, yeah. yeah well, thank you, Hank. I appreciate that. So, uh, 13cgunreviews.com or 13c.us. If you want to go straight to the YouTube channel, uh, 13c. Uh, media.com will take you straight to the YouTube link and uh, and then you can get to the swag shop from there. It's 13c.bigcartel.com, but you can just click on one of those links and you'll see it either in the description or on the uh, website. And uh, yeah, you know, we got some cool patches that are unique to the channel. And um, yeah, do you have, right. um, do you have t-shirts? I do not yet. Hope soon uh, 1776 United is, is working on a, on a, uh, a t-shirt for us so hopefully okay. that'll be live i'm hoping it'll be live before christmas um okay. and when that does i'll put it up okay uh, cool. th th thank you somebody's given us a shout out to our instagram uh we're at 13c gun reviews uh on instagram and i appreciate that mm -hmm. awesome man thanks okay so kevin i think i'll give you the same opportunity here for folks who want to support you what are the different things that you have going on um, you know, and I've got it locked on you, man. So, uh, by the way, Joe, you can feel free to do this. If either one of you guys need to take like a section out of this video and, and repost it or something like that, feel free to do it. So, All right. Yeah. So if you, um, just to keep up with me, it's, uh, on YouTube guys, it's NOC for no other choice. Just NOC firearms channel on YouTube, uh, on Facebook, it's, uh, NOC firearms training, or you can just look up my personal page, Kevin Dixie, that's D as in dog, I X I E. On Instagram, it's at D, D as in donks. D, Jesus. <laughs> okay, okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. Donks. That was okay. My bad. No, okay. I'm gonna have I to make. I could not resist. Now watch. I'm gonna be spelling my name to somebody, and I'm gonna say D as in donks. What? What is gonna happen? And they're gonna be like, "What did you just say?" Uh, <laughs> or on Instagram at NOC Firearms Training, and I could always use help with the mission. So if you guys believe in a mission, believe in a uh, doing work outside of the box. Um, please go to two, uh, NOC, uh, well, Patreon backslash NOC firearms and uh, anything in your heart that you can give there to be great. I will be doing um, uh, GoFundMe here and uh, for the for next year, uh, but I'm going to do GoFundMe a little bit different. I'll be advertising and tell you exactly dollar for dollar where things are going to go. Because um, sometimes we're helping families out. Uh, I do a lot of stuff out of my pocket now. Hurts me a little bit, so I can use a little help. Um, but as far as things coming up, it is the 6th now on the 12th. Be looking out for the Aiming for the Troop episode on the New War Show. So uh, be looking out for that. So stay tuned for that. Um, and then, like I said, it's going to be about family time. I'm doing one last training class for the end of the year, shutting down for family, giving back, relaxing. Wusan. And then um, next year on January 5th, we're going to have Mr. Um, Marcus Weldon in town, the Santa shooter, who was on the show a few episodes back. We're gonna have him in town because he wants to uh, take my shoot in the cold challenge. So we're gonna put him through an evolved course in the snow and see how he he can survive. So um, then next year to be shot show and we'll see what happens after that. Absolutely. Okay. Thanks for that. And and I want to encourage everyone out there. Go out there, support 13C Gun Reviews. Joe is a good guy. Uh, make sure you check out his YouTube channel and all his other social media. Subscribe, follow, all that kind of good stuff. You know, he's a good guy. He's more than worthy of you guys support you know so i just want you guys to know that and same thing with my friend kevin dixie you know what we enjoy the most about this guy right here is his honor sense of honor and a passion and when you see when you see this dude get mad and start to curse <laughs> i guarantee you you know i know you felt it like i felt it so please go out there and support what what Kevin's doing. You know, he's kind of new to this, so it, it, it's. I mean, he's not new to this whole gun thing at all. He's not new to this, but he's new to trying to do the social media thing. And man, it seems like Kevin, you jumped into this like you jumped into this in the middle of the war, my friend. 
Yeah, man. And you know what I, I can say, and I'm not saying it just for just for brownie points, but uh, I give kudos to, you know, I always say I'm cool with this guy, cool with this guy. And I think it gets remiss because I'm on this show so much. But that's got a lot to do with you, too. You know, it's, it's, it's uh, guys like you that believe in evolving and doing things differently that extend that olive branch. And to that point, once somebody does that, what the hell are you going to do with it? Right. You, you know, you have to get out there and you have to work for stuff, too, because people will help people if they see you hustling and trying to make a difference. They will not if you're just sitting on your 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 key shirt hoping things will come to you. So big shout out to Hank for that, too. You and Lola, you. you guys are awesome and great and have opened up a few doors, too. I just when you crack it, I just kick it open. Yeah, absolutely. No, feel free to do that. I really want you guys to go out there and support Kevin. He's NOC Firearms. Make sure you uh, uh, subscribe to him, follow him and all that kind of stuff. Support him. He's on Patreon. He's doing a lot of things. Um, support Aiming for the Truth. We're, we're going to try to like uh, next year spend more time talking about that and helping Kevin out with it. Um, like I said, um, you know, I see uh, American Gun Chick is in here. She has a hashtag unban Jaeger. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, hashtag bless you all. Hashtag one love. <laughs> so there you go. Um, you know, it's it, I know this has been like a very emotional conversation here. You know, some things that people necessarily don't necessarily want to hear. Um, but, you know, that's what this is all about. Right. We need to get out, have these conversations and, and talk to each other. So I want to thank Joe. Thanks for coming on, man. Well, th th thank you for having me. Any yeah. uh, any time, especially now that the Internet's working. Yeah. Uh, you know, and we're able to support a decent stream here. Absolutely, man. You're welcome to come on anytime. If, if you don't hear from us, but you see something going on and you want to jump on, please reach out to us, me or Lola, so we can get you on because we value your opinion. So, you know, and we will try to work you uh, more into it now that your internet's running awesomely. Appreciate it. Yeah. Hey, and uh, and for, for both of you guys, I do uh, on Instagram, I've been trying to do uh, Rum Fridays. So basically Friday evening, I crack open a different bottle of rum and I sample it and just answer subscriber questions. Oh, so, wow. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's cool. Time. I like it. Yeah, I like yeah, it. Yeah. It's a different way to kind of take the edge off. And basically, I just kind of answer any questions that are. I mean, I prefer not to have calculus or uh, physics questions, but, you know, I'll do the best yeah. I can. Can you please remind me and Kevin the next time you do that so we can uh, show some kind of support? Yeah, 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 and, yeah. It does get a little crazy. So, you know, if you remind me somehow, like text me or something like that, I'll try to get in there and, uh, you know, and help yeah. out. American Gun Chick says she's been here the whole time. She's been Probably, I'm sure she's been in the background. Sometimes she hears my big mouth and she's, this is what I've heard. She hears my big mouth carrying on <laughs> and she's got to jump in there. So go ahead, Joe. What were you saying? Um, I'm trying to think. Uh, somebody asked what kind of rums. Um, I, I love rum, like Thomas. The Jefferson. kind you drink. <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the variety. So anything yeah. from uh, you know an Appleton rums to Botany Bay, uh, anywhere in between. Um, yeah, the liquid rum, the liquid rum. So it's, liquid it, rum. I might, I might ask a rookie drinker's question here because I don't I don't drink a lot of alcohol anymore. Sure. Is Captain Morgan real rum? Uh it has alcohol in it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. um, the best rum, I think, is either from Jamaica or Barbados. Yes, and yes. I was gonna say, uh, yeah, from the, the, from the sugar plantation, son. It's gotta be. It's gotta be real sugar cane. Uh, yeah. rum is the best rums uh, by far, and usually those are in the Eastern Caribbean. Yeah, there you go. And I don't, dr I don't drink that much either. But I am from the Caribbean, so I should know a little bit of something about rum because. There is rum in my blood. <laughs> uh, American Gun Chick says, uh, "Miss you, Hank. Miss you, Lola, very much." Same thing with Kevin. Yeah, we feel uh, you know the same way here. Um, she says sh she's shouting out Walter. I guess Walter is listening in the background. Uh, I'm sure Walter enjoyed uh, this conversation. So, okay, I won't keep this going. We're already running late. I want to thank everyone for joining us. It's been awesome. We appreciate it. Uh, don't forget, we're sponsored, and that's how we're staying here on the air by uh, folks like Safety Harbor Firearms, Rand CLP, Andrews Custom Leather, and of course, Big Daddy Guns. So, And we cannot forget the people who support us on Patreon. We're Patreon slash Hank Strange. And of course, all the, 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 the people that donated to us here in the chat, that helps a lot. And we'll be sure to make sure that we pass on the love. All right, guys, we're out of here. Peace. All right, peace. Good night, everybody. Out of here.